Meanwhile, Josh Hendrickson is a lefty from Australia. He will be facing a lineup comprised entirely of righties tonight. Even the switch hitter, Chavez Young, will get a chance to bat from his preferred right-hand side. When we come back, we'll have first pitch with Tyler Murray. National Anthem on the way. You're listening to Fisher Cats Baseball on the WGIR, Fisher Cats Radio Network. The Blue Marsh Insurance Foul Porch is an exclusive group experience. Located in our left field corner, groups of 20 to 30 people are treated to two and a half hours of all-you-can-eat buffet and drinks in a festive atmosphere with a bird's eye view for the visiting bullpen. Regular game tickets are $31 per person for groups of 20 or more. Call us today at 610-370-BALL to reserve a spot for your group. When the Red and Fight and Fills get hungry, we turn to our team feed partners. Special thanks to Wild Missing's Family Restaurant Bakery, P.J. Willihan's Pub and Restaurant, Collegeville Italian Bakery Pizzeria Napolitana, Jimmy G's Railroad House, Mimo's Italian Restaurant and Pizzeria, and Clingers on Carsonia for making sure the Fight and Phil's front office is never hungry on game day. Our staff enjoys delicious meals from our team feed partners, but don't take our word for it. Find out for yourself today. The Helping Company is a proud naming rights sponsor for the Hall of Famer Stadium area at First Energy Stadium and a presenting naming sponsor of five firework nights this season. The Helping Company is a locally owned family business with over 20 years of experience, offering free roof inspections and storm damage repairs, plus so much more. Give them a call today at 610-234-2210 for your roofing needs or visit their website 24-7 at thcexteriors.com. The Helping Company, your local roofing specialist. Of Highway safety, you text, you drive, you pay. That's the bottom line from our friends at the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety. My name is Tyler Murray. Glad to be back with you. Bob Lippman gets the night off. Don't worry, he'll be back tomorrow and Friday and then for the weekend as well here at Delta Dental Stadium. It is Fisher Cats and Fightin' Phils. You may have heard about last night's game. Yes, the longest nine-inning game in Fisher Cats history, four hours and ten minutes. We set the longest road game record of four hours and two minutes earlier this season in Bowie. But last night, we did it one better. So a record-setting season already. Fisher Cats are putting up some big-time numbers and looking to set some more records, certainly on the offensive end with what they've been able to put together this year. But last night, the game belonged to the Fightin' Phils, and they'll look to take two in a row to begin the series in Manchester. It's Phillies double-A against Blue Jays double-A. I always think of a pretty famous home run from Joe Carter back in the early 90s, don't you, when you think Blue Jays and Phillies? Touch them all, Joe. Riley Hobus is the man on the mound for the Fisher Cats today. We'll be facing off against Daniel Brito, Archimedes Gamboa, and Bryson Stott to begin the ball game. Hovis comes in with an ERA just below six. Brito, as he walks to the batter's box, will look to get his average up over 300. He starts the day at 2.98. 7.06, first pitch time it would seem, unless we have another brief delay. 75 degrees, partly cloudy in Manchester. It feels like baseball weather is finally here and hopefully to stay after a few wet weeks in the Queen City. Road gray jerseys for the Phils. Blue tops, white pants for the Cats. First pitch of the ball game is outside from Riley Hovis at 7.06 here on the East Coast. Wind blowing in from left field in Manchester. Preto, the left-handed batter, swings and misses a slider. It's one and one. Archimedes Gamboa waiting on deck and then Bryson Stott after him. Hovis making his fourth start with the Fisher Cats after being signed as a free agent on June 23rd, almost a month ago. 1-1 one, one pitch, cut on and missed, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. Center field and right field soaked in sunlight, but plenty of shadow just about everywhere else. The 1-2 to Brito, off the outside corner. 
And the count goes to two and two. Brito is a 23-year-old from Venezuela. A lot of representation for Venezuela here this week. Great to see on both sides of the roster. 2-2. Two -two. Brito takes a backdoor breaking ball called strike three. Good way to start the day for Riley Hovis against a guy who comes in with six hits in his last three games, including a three-for-five effort yesterday. Brito down looking. Let's get to the Fisher Cats defense, starting in left field with Samad Taylor. Center fielder is Chavez Young. Out in right field, Demi Oramaloye. Then Chris Beck does the catching for Riley Hovis. Third baseman is Vinny Capra. Shortstop, Jordan Groshans. First pitch to Archimedes Gamboa is in for a strike. Second baseman, Otto Lopez. First baseman, Kevin Vacuna. The versatility of this team, especially defensively, is really showing up this week. Gamboa takes a breaking ball outside. In fact, we had uh, our good friends from Channel 9 in town today. Great to see them back with field access. 1-1. One, one. Gamboa grounds one hard to the right side. Backhanded there by Vacuna. He'll underhand to the covering pitcher, Hovis, and he'll step on the bag to complete the 3-1 ground out. So two up, two down for Hovis. So our friends at WMUR, Jamie Staten, did some interviews with uh, Samad Taylor and Jordan Groshans. And Jamie said, just to, just to check, what... Uh, what positions do these guys play? So I, I can make sure you have that right. Well, okay, so Jordan Groshans, shortstop and third base. Uh, Samad Taylor, he plays second, third, left field, center field, sometimes right field. So just about everywhere. Here's Bryson Stott with the bases empty and two down. He'll take the pitch outside. Fastball at 87 from Lahovis, and it's bases empty, two away. No score top of the opening inning. In game two between the Phils and Fisher Cats. 1-0. Try the backdoor breaking ball, but it misses off the outside corner. So 2-0. It's like a big party out in the left field pavilion just below the Samuel Adams Brew House. The four rows of tiered swivel seats. They're enjoying some home run territory. 2-0. That's in for a strike. He's going to work that backdoor breaking ball all evening, it looks like, especially against left-handers. He did it against Brito. And he rung him up looking on that pitch to begin the ball game, and now the same against Stott. Here's 2 1. Goes to the fastball here, and it's fouled away off to the left toward Fungo, the Fisher cat. New Hampshire's mascot walking down the third base concourse. He'll be introduced to the fans in a matter of moments. Dinner on deck looks like a festive area behind home plate right now. All four tables are filled with the best seats in baseball. Closer to home plate than the guys in the dugout. 2-2, two, two. a bender down and in, and Stott's able to hold up. 3-2. He's a 259 hitter, Bryson Stott. Four home runs, 14 RBIs this season. Batting with the bases empty and two down. No score yet, top of the opening inning. Hovis from the windup, the payoff pitch. Grounded toward first base. Glove there again by Vacuna. This time he says, I got it covered, Riley Hovis. He'll step on the base. And a three unassisted ground out completes a clean opening frame for the right-hander. Half an inning in the books. It's Reading nothing. New Hampshire coming to bat next on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. The Reading Fight and Filled Birthday Party Package is the best way to celebrate a birthday. Whether you are a youngster or an adult, there is no better birthday than a Fightin's birthday. The Fightin's Fan Birthday Package is customizable for fans of any age and starts at just $120. Base packages include 10 general admission tickets to a Fightin's home game, an autographed baseball, and a VIP reserved parking spot. Fans can also add a wide variety of experiences and options to make sure your favorite Fightin's Fan's birthday is a grand slam. Customers Bank is a proud continued partner of the United Way of Berks County and the Ready, Set, Read initiative. Ready, Set, Read programs focus on improving literacy skills for children from birth through third grade. The Fundamentals of Reading are a community-wide initiative that bring together schools, businesses, organizations, and individuals throughout our area to improve early grade reading success. Customers Bank and the United Way of Berks County are committed to reading success and urge you and your business to support this worthwhile initiative. For more information on Ready, Set, Read and how you can become involved, please visit readysetreadburks.org. 
and thank you Customers Bank for your continued support. Good start for Riley Hovis. Three up, three down to begin the ball game. Here's Samad Taylor, Austin Martin, and Otto Lopez looking to back him up with a couple of runs in the early going. It'll be against Josh Hendrickson, a left-hander for Reading. Fisher Cats, well, like every team this year, they, they face plenty more lefties than righties this year, but always interesting to see this right-handed loaded lineup face off against a lefty pitcher. When they face lefties this year, the Fisher Cats are five and four, so nine starts against Southpaws. Against righties, they're 23 and 31, which is 54. That feels, I mean, I believe it's one in every five people is left-handed, so that almost checks out. Well, here's Samad Taylor to face Hendrickson, 38th rounder out of San Diego in 2019. First pitch to Taylor is down low. He pulled back on a bunt attempt. It's ball one. Hendrickson was born in Perth in the west of Australia. He made his way to USD, now making his 14th appearance and 11th start of the season. Next pitch to Taylor is in for a strike. Samad batting 303, 12 home runs to lead the Fisher Cats. Also 18 stolen bases to pace the club. Right-handed batting left fielder tonight. 1-1. One, one. Swung on and missed. I almost couldn't come up with the name of the first team that Hendrickson played with this year. It's the 1-2 to Taylor. It misses inside, so 2-2. Two two. I'm used to seeing... CLR in the advanced A column for Phillies prospects. It used to be Clearwater, Florida. That's now the low A affiliate. It's changed to the Lakewood Blue Claws, but they changed their name. 2 2 pitch to Taylor, reached out for and chopped foul. It now says JS in his stat line. So his first six outings of the year with the JS Blue Claws. And you may have heard that they changed their name to the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. Here comes the 2-2 two -two as Taylor leads off the first. Pitch is swung on and fouled away into the first base seats. But for Hendrickson, it'll be his eighth double-A start. And so far, so good. He's 3-1, a 3-2-5 ERA. 29 Ks in 36 innings, so he isn't exactly laying it up in terms of Ks per inning. 12 walks, opponents batting 238 against him. 2-2 two -two to Taylor, breaking ball is tipped foul. No score yet, bottom of the first inning. Riley Hovis got a strikeout and then two ground outs to first base to get through a perfect top half of the inning. After Taylor, it'll be Austin Martin and then Otto Lopez. This lineup finally starting to get some consistent health, although Gabriel Moreno is still on the shelf for a couple of weeks. 2-2 two -two is grounded foul. And that could wind up just being indefinite for Moreno. Had the thumb injury. I think some prognosticators said four to six weeks is the typical length of time for the injury, but you never want to rush things. And if the plan for Moreno was just to spend this entire year in the minors, I think the star catcher has proven all he needs to. But hopefully we get another look at him. 2-2 two -two to Taylor. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string on him with a changeup for strike three. So Taylor down on strikes. And just like Hovis, it's a strikeout for Hendrickson to begin his evening. Let's take around the fight and Phil's defense. Out in left field, it's Granny Kumana. The center fielder is Jorge Bonifacio. In right, it's Josh Steven. The third baseman is Archimedes Gamboa. At shortstop, Bryson Stott. Second baseman, Daniel Brito. And the first baseman is Madison Stokes. First offering to Austin Martin is just outside for ball one. Rodolfo Duran does the catching for Josh Hendrickson. So here's Austin Martin, now leads the league in on-base percentage. 1-0 pitch is driven foul off to the right. 
a 409 OBP for Martin. And he's just had the consistency of a guy who you wouldn't think is making his pro debut this year. Just 174 professional at bats, all with the Fisher Cats here in Double A after winning the College World Series last year. 1-1 one, one is grounded to third, staying low on it to scoop it up is Gamboa, and plenty of time to throw across to get Martin 5-3. So a strikeout and a ground out to begin at Hendrickson's outing. And the bases are empty with two away for Otto Lopez. And talk about league leaders. Well, it's been Lopez atop the batting race for quite some time. However, Oscar Gonzalez of Akron is creeping in. The Rubber Ducks right fielder is hitting 330. Now he's played 11 fewer games than Lopez, so maybe a case of a guy who just had enough plate appearances to qualify, but he's only three points behind Otto, who's at 333. First pitch to Lopez on the outside corner, a called strike. Three home runs and 33 runs batted in to go along with his stat line this year. Hendrickson from the windup. Here's the 0-1. Lopez lines one to center field. It will drop in for a base hit. A single for Otto Lopez as they'll fire it back in with Jorge Bonifacio. And there's your first base runner. A two-out single in the bottom of the first for the Fisher Cats. Well, a wild one last night. As we've continued to say, it was the longest nine-inning game in Fisher Cats history. And the big takeaway was how long the first couple of innings lasted. It was 8 o'clock in the second inning yesterday in a game that began at 7.05. We'll see how long that two-out single will extend this opening inning for Jordan Groshans and company. Another good night for Groshans yesterday, hitting 400 this month as he takes a pitch outside. And for Groshans, it was... On and off, not the injured list, but it's, I guess the active portion of the roster. He would take several days off at a time to nurse some injuries. Throw to first to check on Lopez. He dives back in there. So this is game number 44 for Groshans this season. The Fisher Cats playing in game 65 as a team. But the numbers have really rounded into form. He's batting 288, 366 on base. First pitch to Groshans, grounded to second base, sharply hit, but still handled there by Burrito. He goes the short way to second for the 4-6, and that'll retire the side. Gear up for the Fightin' Phil's season. Visit the Brentwood Industries Fightin' Phil's team store at First Energy Stadium, or check out our online store 24 hours a day, seven days a week at rphills.com shop. We have a wide variety of Fight and Phil's hats, t-shirts, kids apparel, and more. Looking for something new? Check out our latest selection of Los Luchadores de Redding and Redding Hot Dog Gear, plus throwback black R-Trans R-Phil's attire. Root for your Fightin's in style. Stop by the Brentwood Industries Fightin's Team Store or rphills.com slash shop. The Reading Fight and Fills, in conjunction with Savage 61 Fiesta Fridays, are proud to partner with the EXP Realty Group throughout the 2021 season. Visit their convenient website at brgpa.com. The custom search bar makes house hunting online easier than ever, and their talented team of agents is here to answer all your questions. Call them today at 610-926-8610. EXP Realty Group is a proud partner of the Reading Fight and Fills at all seven Savage 61 Fiesta Friday games during the 2021 season. EXP Realty Group, where every move matters. Savage Auto Groups is a proud sponsor of the Reading Fighting Fills. Our large inventory and wide selection of models, along with competitive pricing, allow us to make great deals on many vehicle makes and models. Visit Savage 61, Kia, and LMB in Berks County for all your automotive needs. Nice night for a ball game, and that should be the theme for the next few days if the forecast holds up, and I think we've all earned it. Keep going back to the 4th of July, and we had, even for the 4th of July, a big time Fisher Cats crowd. We got one of the two games in, which gives you an idea of how rainy it was early in the week. We needed a, a double header on the 4th of July. Second game was suspended due to rain, but we are back. 
the weather's better. Here's Jorge Bonifacio in a scoreless second. The first pitch of the inning is grounded foul down the third base line. And the count nothing and one. But even yesterday, I don't know if you were maybe driving around late, maybe heading home from the game, or maybe heading to a local tavern to watch the NBA Finals, but we had some wild weather for about 10 to 15 minutes here. In fact, it came so soon after the conclusion of last night's record-setting four-hour, 10-minute game. If they had gone maybe 10 more minutes, we would have been in real trouble. Here's the 0-1 to Bonifacio. It is taken low. So one ball, one strike. It was advertised as hail, which I kind of scoffed at. I'm a bit of a skeptic, I have to admit. But it was like raining crystals from the sky. You could hear it clicking and clacking in the seats. 1-1 one, one is a breaking ball inside, 2-1. and one. Some signage was torn down, and we have theorized that a lightning bolt or something like that hit the video board. 2-1, swung on and popped up, shallow right. Out from second base goes Lopez, and from right field is Ora Maloye, and Demi will make the snag to retire Bonifacio for the first out of the second inning. Still 0-0 here in the top half with Redding at the plate against Riley Hovis. Because last night we turned off the video board. Screen went completely blank as it should. And <laughs> then the sky lit up with lightning and then the video board came back to life. Except it was just showing blue. Like the beginning of, of an old VCR or something like that. A blue screen out there. Never a good sign. Here's Madison Stokes, first AB of the day. Let's take a breaking ball down low. So... You know, I went back there, dodged a bunch of spider webs. It's kind of scary by that video board, I have to admit, but turned it off. It was fine. Turn it back on today, and it's showing us all kinds of strange images. Shout out to Colin Stewart, our production director, getting it done. The 1 0 to Stokes is in for a strike. That's not perfect, a few blips here and there, but you can see everything we need to see on the video board tonight. After, for most of the day, it looked like. We would have a big blue streak through the middle of everything because of an apparent lightning strike with the wild weather yesterday. 1-1 one, one is down low. So 2-1, and one, Hobus facing Stokes. No score in the top of the second inning. Stokes comes in with a 263 batting average, eight home runs this year, and 26 runs batted in. Faces empty, one down, the 2-1 pitch. Inside with a slider, so 3-1. But a really good job, as usual, by the Fisher Cats grounds crew. Steve Gurton leading the way yesterday, getting that tarp out on the field. Rolled it off this morning at 10. 3 1, popped up foul, out of play back towards us. It'll reach the seats. In fact, right on top of the press box. That hit something loud. No souvenirs to be had. As the count goes full on Stokes, it's 3 and 2. So it would have been a, a flash flood last night, except it was hail a lot of leaves into the stadium. 3-2 pitch, swung on and driven deep to center field. Sending Young back to the right center field track. Now he will make the catch on the move. Good read from Chavez Young. Off the bat, that looked like real trouble. But as you look out to left field, if you're in the ballpark, you can see those flags billowing in. So that may have affected the angle of that ball and eventually the flight path, allowing Young to track it down. A well-struck fly out to right field. So two down in the second inning. The score is still 0-0 as the Phils bat in the top half. It'll be the catcher, Rodolfo Duran. First pitch from Hovis, fouled away. Duran, a 2-0-6 hitter, five homers, nine runs batted in. He probably hears Hungry Like a Wolf as a walk-up song everywhere he goes because of his last name, Duran. 0-1, breaking ball strike. And just about every team does this. If they, they see an easy avenue to not necessarily poke fun at a player, but to play a song that makes sense along with his name, they're going to do it. In Hartford, there's a song, I guess, where the guy just says, Vinny, 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 over and over again uh, for Vinny Capra. And he responded by winning player of the week. 0-2 to Duran. Swing and a miss. Hovis got another one. Six up, six down, two strikeouts along the way. And he 
What does it mean to bank locally with Tompkins? It means keeping your money in your community with a team of neighbors to guide you through big decisions and milestones, plus all the convenience of our mobile app where you can manage your account, deposit checks remotely, send money to family and friends, even turn your card off if it gets misplaced, then back on when you find it. Ready to bank locally with the team at Tompkins? Visit Tompkins Vist Bank online or at a branch to get started. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Copa de la Diversión is an initiative of MILB, which creates alternate identities for teams across the country wishing to better reach out to their Latino communities. The new identity represents more than a luchador. Luchar means to fight for, and luchador translates to fighter. But it also signifies a specific type of fighter, a masked wrestler. The mask logo pays tribute to some of the most notable elements of the city of Reading. Embodied in the luchador's masks is Redding's Pagoda, surrounded by 23 sun rays representing the Latin American countries and Puerto Rico. Down the bridge of the nose is Redding's Fire Tower. Home plate serves as the luchador's mouth, with First Energy Stadium's facade creating the upper lip. Below the chin are train tracks, symbolic of the historic Redding Railroad. And along the side are baseball seams, a nod to baseball town's rich history. Fans can look forward to the r Phil's players suiting up in Los Luchadores de Redding caps and jerseys on specific games throughout the season. Zero, zero, bottom of the second inning. Nobody's found the sweet spot yet, but you can find the sweet spot for remote office or hybrid work settings with Canon Solutions America. They're a proud sponsor of the Fisher Cats. Visit csa.canon.com or call 1-800-815-4000. That's Canon Solutions America. My name is Tyler Murray. Glad you're with us tonight on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. Pat Cullen in studio, stepping up to the proverbial plate, filling in for Sean Patton tonight. Thanks to Justin McIsaac as well, our executive producer. Well, here's Chavez Young. He's getting louder and louder cheers every time he's introduced before the game because the fan favorite narrative continues with this guy. First pitch of the switch hitter from the right side is off the outside corner, 1-0. And if we continue crossing our fingers for technical success with our mic'd up apparatus, uh, we might get a cool video coming in the next week or so. These things take time, though. The 1-0 to Young. Swing and a chopper, a hard hit though to the left side and under the glove of the shortstop into left field. A base hit for Chavez Young. A seeing eye chopper that stayed low when it needed to. Under the glove of Stott and Young has a leadoff single in the second. Young will get the batting average up over 250 after that last base hit. And Vinny Capra is at the plate now. Put a picture on the video board of Vinny Capra high-fiving teammates back to the dugout. That same picture was used on the front page of the Hippo Press just before opening day. Iconic Manchester imaging, Vinny Capra. First pitch, uh, changeup cut on and missed. Capra, as you may have heard, is the reigning AA Northeast League Player of the Week. He had an OPS, that's on base plus slugging, Almost the uh, the first ever advanced stat, which right now it's pretty rudimentary, I guess. OPS of one and a half. Capra takes this pitch outside. That's uh, 1.500. Zero zero. And he had two home runs and nine RBIs for the week. And the thing is, he did that in two games combined last Tuesday and Wednesday in Hartford. Part of that 4-2 series win. Throw to first, and Young will dive back in there. Count is one and one on Vinny Capra. Pitcher Cats and fighting Phils, scoreless, 0-0, zero, zero, bottom of the second. But a leadoff single for Chavez Young. 1-1 one, one pitch, a little bit inside, so 2-1 to Capra. The wind continues to blow in and maybe a little bit across the outfield from left. That helped a hard hit ball from Madison Stokes find the glove of Chavez Young. 
2-1, reached out for and softly hit the third. Coming in to get it is Gamboa. Quickly fields and fires with a jump throw to get Capra by almost half the baseline. Impressive play by Archimedes Gamboa. It does move Young up to second base with one away. So a couple of RBI opportunities on deck. It's Kevin Vicuña now and then Demi Oramaloya after that. Kevin Vicuña playing first base today. He is probably the most prominent example of the versatility on this team defensively. 17 games at first base, nine at his natural shortstop position, four at second base, eight at third base, every infield position. First pitch is swung on and drilled to left field, but straight at Granny Kumana. He'll square it up and make the catch, and that keeps Young at second base. So we'll call that a soft enough line out for Vicuña. And with two away, it's up to Demi Oramaloya. Really good finish of the series in Hartford for Demi, especially in the power department. Did not play yesterday, so we'll see if he can keep the four game hitting streak going. Hitting 250 so far in July, average back up above the Mendoza line. First pitch is low. At home runs in back to back games. Last Thursday and Friday, and during the four-game hitting streak, he's got six hits and 16 trips. The 1-0 on the inside corner, a called strike. He told Mike Wilner of the Toronto Star and the Deep Left Field podcast he had a really slow start to his 2019, but turned it around in a big way in the second half of the year. He knows he can do it again as we've reached the midway point. So far, so good for that prophecy. Runner on second, 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball, swing and a miss. So two strikes on Damian. That was the big curve ball from Hendrickson. He's looking to keep this a 0-0 ball game, bottom of the second inning. Mr. Cats have two singles, but they've been scattered. It was a two-out hit from Lopez in the first and a leadoff single from Young here in the second. He moved up a base on the ground ball from Capra, but he's still there now with two away. Hendrickson ready with the one-two as Chavez dances off the bag. Breaking ball grounded right back to the hill. Snagged at eye level by Hendrickson. He'll jog about 85% of the way to the base and then toss it the rest of the way to get Oromaloye on a one-three ground down. So the game's first runner in scoring position is stranded and we'll go to the third. It's still Redding nothing. New Hampshire nothing on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. Spend some quality time with the family by taking them out to a ball game every Sunday home game at First Energy Stadium. Sundays are Burke's Packing Sunday Family Fun Days, presented by Classic Harley Davidson. Get four tickets, four hot dogs, and four sodas for only $50 when purchased in advance. Burke's Packing is a family-owned and operated meat processor located here in Reading, specializing in hot dogs, ham, specialty meats, and more. Join us for Burke's Packing Sunday Family Fun Days at Sunday home games all season long here at First Energy Stadium. The Fightins feature special post-game concerts throughout the entire season with more live music than anywhere else in Burke's County. Each post-game concert features $1 off St. Boniface Brewing and live music on the T-Mobile stage. That's post-game concerts thanks to St. Boniface Brewing. From the cleanup position, there's no one better in the field than J.P. Mascaro and Son. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality service for your home or business. Make our team your team, whether in a pinch or for the long haul. Like the Reading Fight and Fills, we're the best in our field. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. 
Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARA. Every day but Monday, here's a Josh Steven to lead off the third inning. He'll take a pitch up high. And even higher, a plane goes overhead. Could it be a new Spirit Airlines jetliner heading to Manchester Boston Regional Airport? No, it's not. The 1-0 pitch is in for a strike. That's not happening just yet. But come next spring training, sign me up. MHT, live free and fly. Pitch to Steven. Fastball on the outside edge. A called strike. Ovis from the windup, and the breaking ball is low. Two balls and two strikes the count. And the pitch spins down and in. So the count is full three and two. Here in the third, the Phils have the bottom third of the order. Steven now, Luke Miller after that, and then Granny Kumana in the ninth spot. Ovis ready from the wind, the payoff pitch up and away. Lost his handle there. And on the 3-2 fastball, he's given up his first base runner, a leadoff walk in the third inning after going six up, six down to begin the ball game. Speaking of Manchester Boston Regional Airport, let's get to the flight to the majors. Blue Jays and Red Sox were postponed in Buffalo due to inclement weather. As a result, the Blue Jays are going to pick up an extra game in Toronto with the game rescheduled for a doubleheader on August 7th. August 7th here in New Hampshire is the Northwoods Law New Hampshire meet and greet, so mark your calendars for that. Get your tickets soon. Here's Luke Miller. He takes the first pitch strike. But in Buffalo, or rather for Triple-A Buffalo, four former Fisher Cats hit home runs in a 14-1 win over the Syracuse Mets. Oh, one pitch. Breaking ball inside to Miller. He's batting with a man on first. Nobody out in a scoreless game, top of the third. Infield hoping for a double play ball. Pitch to Miller. Down and away. So two and one. Ovis comes set, dealing with his first base runner of the ball game after a leadoff walk. Two one, big swing and a miss from Miller, and the count two and two. And we told you about some former Fisher Cats on the Manchester Boston Regional Airport flight to the majors. How about a current Fisher Cat, who was also a former Fisher Cat, a longtime record-holding fan favorite, true New Hampshire legend, back in the building, Casey Lawrence. Runner goes for second, the 2-2 to Miller is outside, and no throw from Beck, a really good jump from first base for Josh Stevens, so he gets the steal. And with nobody out on the 3-2 count, it's a man in scoring position early on here for the Phils. Looking to break the 0-0 tie in the top of the third. Yes, Casey Lawrence is back. Just transferred from AAA Buffalo slash Trenton to join the Fisher Cats, who have a hole in the starting rotation because Woods Richardson's in the Olympics. 3-2 fastball, called third strike. On the outer black at 88. All about location there for Riley Hovis. And he gets his third strike out in as many innings. And a big first out there to keep the runner at second base. So excited to have Casey Lawrence back. We were looking back at his uh, career breakdown. He, of course, made the major leagues, Seattle Mariners, and a real luxury to have him for some organizational depth and hopefully another chance to get back to the major leagues. Here's Granny Kumana from the right side. He takes a fastball strike. It was back in 2012 when I was working for the Dunedin Blue Jays Casey Lawrence was a pitcher there in advanced day down to the Florida State League. That's when he got called up to New Hampshire for the first time, 2012. Go, 
Here's the 0-1. Kumana swings and lines one out to center field. It's down for a base hit in front of Young. They will wave Steven home. The throw is up the third base line. Throw to first behind Kumana. They'll put the tag on. Lopez able to slap it on him. It's an RBI single for Granny Kumana who slams the helmet in frustration. And he slammed it too hard. It popped up and hit him in the forehead. Not his finest moment, but it's not his worst moment either because he's given Redding a 1-0 lead with an RBI single here in the third. So the leadoff walk cashes in, and the Phils strike first. But it will be an 8-2-4 to two to four put out. Chavez Young through home, Beck through to the covering second baseman Lopez at the first base back. Now the first pitch to Daniel Brito at the top of the order is outside. And last note on Casey Lawrence, who we're so excited to have back on the Fisher Cats roster. Even uh, fighting Phils fans will be happy to see Casey Lawrence. As the 1-0 pitch is on the outside corner, a called strike to Brito. Because Casey went to Albright College, which is in Reading. And Casey is from McSherrystown, Pennsylvania. 1-1 one, one pitch, big swing from Brito. Comes up empty for strike two. And Riley Hovis and Casey Lawrence, they've got similar stuff. It's that high 80s heat that seems to find every corner. So regardless of, I guess, a lower velocity, still very effective. The one two pitch is low, so two and two to Brito. It is a one nothing Reading lead on the RBI single from Granny Kumana. It scored Josh Steven, who started the inning with a walk and then stole second base. Miller struck out looking. And the second out was recorded on a throw to first behind the RBI single of Kumana. Two two pitches grounded to first, a third chance today for Kevin Vicuña. He'll gather it in, race to the bag, and step on the base to retire the sack. So we'll go to the bottom of the third, Redding's on the board. It is one nothing fighting Phils here on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. From the cleanup position, there's no one better in the field than J.P. Mascaro and Son. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality hauling, disposal, and recycling service for your home or business. Make our team your team, whether in a pinch or for the long haul. Like the Redding fighting Phils, we're the best in our field. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARO. Join us as we celebrate Reading's Hispanic and Latino culture during seven Friday home games this season. The Savage 61's Fiesta Fridays, presented by Alex Patanzas of EXP Realty, Humane, Pennsylvania, Supportive Concepts for Families, Children's Home of Reading, and Mao Beer. Fiesta Fridays features special Los Luchadores de Redding uniforms, Hispanic and Latino food and music, and other cultural events throughout the ballpark. Get your tickets now by calling 610-370-BALL or visiting us at the Widenhammer Ticket Office at First Energy Stadium. Every time you grab an ice-cold 20-ounce Pepsi, you'll find a Pepsi emoji on the side of the bottle. So while the Pepsi delivers this, the Pepsi emoji delivers this. ahead crack open a pepsi and tell the world how you feel and what you love with pepsi emojis say it with pepsi the impressive innings new hampshire's going to have chris beck samad taylor and austin martin that's nine one and two to bat here in the bottom of the third against the left-hander josh hendrickson just the one hit from Redding to produce that run. It was a walk and a steal from Steven, and then the base knock from Kumana. Chris Beck will lead it off. More than likely, a base hit here would get him back above the Mendoza line, but you can't calculate this guy's value to the team, especially now without a healthy Gabriel Moreno. First pitch to Beck is fouled off. So many different things have affected the Fisher Cats' availability this year. We briefly mentioned the Simeon Woods Richardson assignment to Team USA. 
Kelowna, Tokyo. They'll face Team Israel first, I believe, on July 30th in the early hours our time. 0-1 to Beck. He swings and lines one back up the middle, a base hit to center field. So a leadoff single for Chris Beck. Chavez Young had a leadoff base knock for the Cats last inning, but didn't get past second base. Let's see what the top of the order can do with the tying run aboard to begin the inning. Samad Taylor struck out swinging his first time up after a long battle with Josh Hendrickson. That was a nine pitch at bat. Went down swinging. First pitch to Taylor, grounded to shortstop, a chance for two. Glove by Stott, tossed to Brito for one, and the turn to first is there in plenty of time, a 6-4-3 double play. So Taylor's 0 for two, that wipes out the leadoff single by Chris Beck. The good news for Beck, though, that he is indeed above the Mendoza line with that leadoff single. 204 is the new batting average. Austin Martin introduced, grounded out to shortstop, or rather third base, his first time up. From the right side against the southpaw, Hendrickson. First pitch is outside. It is a 1-0 fight and fills lead in the bottom of the third. Base is empty, two away from Martin after the double play. First pitch is fouled away. Fisher Cats come in tonight with a record of 28 and 35. Ahead of the fight and fills by, well, in the win column, which you never track, one game. Reading's 27 and 40. 1-1. One, one. Up and in, two balls and a strike to Martin. In the last column, it's five games separating these two teams from third place in the division. 2-1. Down and in, three balls and a strike. Again, the playoff teams will be the two best records across the league, regardless of division. They'll play a five-game championship series to crown a winner at the very end of the year. 3-1 to Martin. At the letters, a called struck. Right now, the top two teams are both in the AA Northeast League. It's Portland on a 14-game winning streak. 41-23. and 23. Wow. 3-2 pitch to Martin. Off the outside corner, ball four. So the league leader and on base percentage will continue to pad that number with a hard earned base on balls to continue the third inning. So runner on first, two away. Otto Lopez, the batter, as the Fisher Cats trail 1 0 in the bottom of the third. Lopez the righty against Hendrickson the lefty. Throw to first and Martin will dive back in. Six stolen bases for Martin this year. He's been caught three times. Held on by Stokes. Hendrickson comes home and the first pitch misses outside. Cats baseball brought to you by the Backyard Brewery. If you love craft beer and great food, that's the place you want to check out this summer. Connect with them on Facebook and Instagram at Backyard Brewery NH. Hendrickson delivers a 1-0. It's lined back up the middle. Another base hit for Otto Lopez. He'll start the day two for two with a single to center field. Martin stops at second base. And two of New Hampshire's four hits tonight belong to your league leader in batting average, Otto Lopez. Now Jordan Grosjean's an opportunity. Two on, two out, bottom of the third. And the Fisher Cats have the tying run at second and the go-ahead run at first. I told you earlier, Grosjean's is batting 400 in the month of July. He's 0 for 1 tonight after a 4-6 fielder's choice. First pitch outside the Groshans. Final Jeopardy category just came in from Pat Cullen. The category is African Monarchs. Nathan Strauss 
the whiz kid of our broadcast team, says African Monarchs, that's right up my alley. Oh, he's a uh, double major, I believe, in journalism and foreign languages at UMass. So we'll see. Two on, two out. One nothing, fills in the third. Pitch to Groshen, swung on and hit off the end of the bat to shallow left. Coming on is Kumana, he won't get there. It dunks in for a base hit. Coming in to score is Martin, sliding into third is Lopez. He's safe, and the ball game is tied. A two out delivery from Jordan Groshens, and we are knotted up at one. Well, after the double play, it looked like Fisher Cats had already had their opportunity in the third, but Martin walked, Lopez singled, and now Groshen singled, and the score is tied. And the hustle from Lopez puts runners on the corners for Chavez Young, who already has a base hit tonight. It's been a death by a thousand cuts tonight, or tie game by five singles tonight. The Fisher Cats offense, Chavez Young, takes the first pitch strike. They're on the corners with two down. So the go-ahead run is at third base for New Hampshire in the bottom of the third, just after Redding had struck first with the Kumana RBI single. The 0-1 from Hendrickson. Up high, check swing, did he go? No. Says first base umpire Gabe Alfonso. Young steps in from the right side, the switch hitter. Told you, just the 10th game of the year against the lefty starter for New Hampshire. Breaking ball is grounded back up the middle, a base hit to center field. It's the sixth hit of the ball game for New Hampshire, and it's driven in the second run. Chavez Young, he's two for two, and he's given New Hampshire a 2-1 lead. So four consecutive base runners following the double play. Martin walks, then Lopez, Groshans, and Young all single. And the Fisher Cats are in front. It is the fourth hit of the inning. Beck, of course, was erased on the double play off the bat of Samad Taylor. And a good response from New Hampshire after giving up the game's first run in the top half. They've got the lead right back in the bottom of the third. This will bring out the pitching coach, Brad Ferguson, to talk with his pitcher. Hendrickson allowed one single in the first. Another single in the second, but now four base hits in the third. And the Fisher Cats have been able to get a couple of runs across. You love to see a two out rally. And for Chavez Young, he's gone two for two tonight, as we mentioned. And it's not as though He's feasted on every lefty he gets to bat right-handed against. Entered the day seven out of 40 against left-handed pitching. That's a 175 average. Well, here's Vinny Capra. Chance to extend the lead, perhaps, with two on and two out. Groshans tied it with a single. Young broke the tie with another base hit. First pitch to Capra is up and away. Well, Vinny's gone from a nice story, a late round draft pick. He was 23 when he started in New Hampshire. Fans love him. He's not an imposing presence, just 5'8", 175. So it started as a nice story. He got plenty of playing time two years ago for a team that struggled a little bit, but he was a bright point. But now, I mean, he is a serious contender for some of the league's top awards. Full season all-star definitely in the conversation. 1-0, fouled away, and there's no double-A all-star game this year. And there are maybe some talks to potentially bring it back, but it was pretty quickly decided with the challenges that we'd be faced with in 2021 to not overcomplicate things by sending a lot of players to the same spot and back to their respective teams. But maybe next year. So no mid-season all-star teams to be reported. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Capra. Foul back. Fastball at 80-80, he just missed it. 
New set of baseball so we can tease Final Jeopardy. African monarchs. Some devotees of this emperor who died in 1975 trace his lineage to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. I don't have a clue. We'll hopefully have an answer for you after the break. 1-2 to Capra is low. Two balls and two strikes. An emperor from Africa, apparently, who can trace his lineage to King Solomon. Died in 1975. It's tough. 2-1-2 two two out for Capra. The 2-2 two -two pitch is hit hard toward third base and down the line a fair ball toward the bullpen. Roshans will score. Sprinting to third right behind him is Chavez Young. The relay throw will be late. Vinny Capra can't stop hitting. It is a two-run double and the Fisher Cats have opened up a 4-1 lead. That is four consecutive hits from the Fisher Cats, five consecutive base runners, and all with the bases empty and two outs initially. They have put four runs on the board. Now you gotta share that Player of the Week award, Vinny. Another good start to a series. He's a good teammate. <laughs> Here's Kevin Bacuna. He's just the second Fisher Cat to win a Player of the Week award this year. It was Gabriel Moreno. About a month ago. First pitch to Vicuña, foul back. A walk, three singles, and then a two-run double. Four runs on the board for the Fisher Cats. They've got seven hits. It was all singles until the two-bagger from Capra. Vicuña takes a big swing and a miss for strike two. That's now 11 doubles for Capra this year to go along with four triples and a career-high six home runs. Capra leads off of second with two outs. The 0-2 pitch to Vicuña, up and away. Riley Ovis has to be pleased. One run came across against him in the top of the third, but when he'll retake the mound in the fourth, it'll be at least a three-run lead. One-two pitch to Vicuña. Breaking ball down and in. Good block from the catcher, Duran. Four runs on seven Fisher Cats hits. Five of those hits coming here in the third. And the seventh batter of the inning, Kevin Vicuña, waits for a 2-2. Swing and a miss, chased a high fastball at 90. And that'll end the inning, but not before the Fisher Cats put four on the board, and they take a 4-1 lead into the fourth inning. Over the Reading Fighting Phils, it's game two of six this week at Delta Dental Stadium. Fisher Cats in a big third inning to take an early edge. This is the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. From the cleanup position, there's no one better in the field than J.P. Mascaro and Son. Trust the familiar Mascara Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality hauling, disposal, and recycling service for your home or business. Make our team your team, whether in a pinch or for the long haul. Like the Reading Fight and Fills, we're the best in our field. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARO. Join us as we celebrate Reading's Hispanic and Latino culture during seven Friday home games this season. The Savage 61's Fiesta Fridays, presented by Alex Patanzas of EXP Realty, Humane, Pennsylvania, Supportive Concepts for Families, Children's Home of Reading, and Mao Beer. Fiesta Fridays features special Los Luchadores de Reading uniforms, Hispanic and Latino food and music, and other cultural events throughout the ballpark. Get your tickets now by calling 610-370-BALL for visiting us at the Widenhammer Ticket Office at First Energy Stadium. 
Every time you grab an ice-cold 20-ounce Pepsi, you'll find a Pepsi emoji on the side of the bottle. So while the Pepsi delivers this, the Pepsi emoji delivers this. So go ahead, crack open a Pepsi, and tell the world how you feel and what you love with Pepsi emojis. Say it with Pepsi. The heart of the order, two, three, and four. Our Kimides Gamboa will take a first pitch strike at 86. Gamboa to be followed by Bryson Stott and then Jorge Bonifacio. Oh, one pitch is fouled away. Waiting on our final Jeopardy answer in the category of African monarch. Some devotees of this emperor who died in 1975 trace his lineage to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. 0-2, oh, a little bit high, one and two. I mean, I'm just trying to come up with some kind of guess. Netanyahu, 0-2, oh, backdoor breaking ball, misses outside. One ball, two strikes. Camboa bounced out to the first baseman back in the first inning. He's 0-for-1. Wind is shifting here. 1-2, a ground one to the first baseman again. Two big hops for Vicuña. This time the underhand flips to the covering Hobus, who steps on the bag. So similar looking 3-1 ground outs for Archimedes Gamboa. And he starts the night 0 for 2. Bryson Stott now with the bases empty and one down. The answer is H A I L E Haley Selassie, former emperor of Ethiopia. So file that one into new information. Good to know. Bryson Stott takes the first pitch strike. He grounded out unassisted to first base in the opening inning. That retired the side. It was six up, six down for Hobus, who wants to work quickly here, but Stott had other ideas, so he'll call time. Steps out of the batter's box, does the Nomar Garcia para routine, and back into the batter's box he goes. Now ready from the left side. The 0 1. Down low, a ball and a strike. 4-1 Fisher Cats after a two-out rally that saw four consecutive hits and five consecutive base runners. 1-1. One, one. Outside, two balls and a strike. Jorge Bonifacio waiting on deck. From the windup, here's the 2-1 from Hovis. It is low. Yeah, the wind is shifting. It was pointing straight in from left field earlier. Then it was out toward the right field corner from the three flags in left field. Now it is back more toward home plate again. 3-1, swing and a foul ball, third base side out of play. So we'll call that a swirling wind. The forecast has been tough to predict. I did not see anything about a hailstorm around 11 o'clock last night, but that's what we got. And then today was supposed to be the rainy day this week, but it's been beautiful. Pitch to Stott is cut on and missed. Strike three, tied up on a breaking ball down and in. And another strikeout brought to you by Five Guys, Burgers and Fries for Riley Hovis. That's number four tonight. Still just the two base runners allowed by the right-hander. It was the walk to Josh Steven who scored two batters later after a stolen base and a single. The single was from Granny Kumana. At the time, it was 1-0. Right now, it is 4-1 Fisher Cats. Jorge Bonifacio, the batter. He'll take a pitch outside. Hobus delivers the 1-0. Inside, 2-0 with the breaking ball. 
Bonifacio flat out to right field his first time up. Looking to produce Redding's second hit as we play on in the fourth. 2 0. There's a strike over the outside corner. Bonifacio is the brother of Emilio Bonifacio, former Blue Jay. The 2 1, grounded foul. Emilio Bonifacio last played for the Washington Nationals in 2020. Looks like he's uh, on the Dominican Republic Olympic team. 2-2 two -two pitch to his younger brother is lined to center field. Young started back. Now he'll come in and go toward the right center field gap and put the glove on it to retire the side. A 1-2-3 fourth for Riley Hobus. And it's 4-1 Fisher Cats after three and a half innings. This is the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. Cornwall Manor is an active senior living community on a 190-acre wooded campus in Cornwall, Lebanon County. The community offers independence and opportunities for wellness and fitness, as well as educational and musical programs and the peace of mind of having convenient health care on site. Cornwall Manor offers a range of residential choices from apartments to homes. Prospective residents are welcome to visit us for lunch and have a chance to learn more about the community. More information is available online at cornwallmanor.org. Cornwall Manor, celebrating 70 years of senior living. Feasers Incorporated, a family-owned, full-line food service distributor located in central Pennsylvania. Services restaurants, sporting facilities, theme amusement parks, health care facilities, educational facilities, and other institutions throughout Pennsylvania and the Mid-Atlantic region. For over 100 years, Feasers and its employees have committed themselves to making customer service their highest priority. Feasers works hard to provide customers with the products they require, delivered by their helpful fleet drivers. Feasers is large enough to serve and small enough to care. For more information, Call 800-326-2828 or Feasers.com. ROG Orthodontics is the proud official partner of the ROG Orthodontics Fightin' Phil's Kids Club. Join today at Fightin's.com to get your free ROG Orthodontics Kids Club t-shirt and visit FantasticSmiles.com for more information on all the great work that ROG Orthodontics provides. ROG Orthodontics and the Reading Fightin' Phil's. Two great hometown partners. Demi Oramaloye will lead off the bottom of the fourth for the Fisher Cats. They've got a 4-1 lead on seven hits. And Riley Hovis has allowed just one so far. With individual and family plan for Northeast Delta Dental, you get the same dental benefits offered by employee group plans. You can count on us to be there with the dentist you want and the services you need. First pitch to Ora Maloye misses up and away. Protect your dental health and your overall health through valuable coverage and regular dental checkups. Go to deltadentalcoversme.com. The 1 0, fastball and a late swing from Demi. So it's 1 and 1. Leading off to fourth. Two homers last week, his first two of the year. Chased a 1 1 fastball up and away. So a ball and two strikes. Still Josh Hendrickson, the left handed starter. His 1 2 curveball is tipped foul. Laura Maloye, born in Nigeria. What a new video board feature this year. We put the uh, flag and hometown of each Fisher Cats player on the video board. He asked it be changed from Nigeria to Canada. One two pitch is hammered to left field. Kumana back toward the gap and he'll make the catch. Hit it right at him. But then he keeps squaring up baseballs these last couple of weeks. What a line out. He's 0 for 2. So here's Chris Peck who singled his first time up with the bases empty and one away. 4-1 Fisher Cats, bottom of the fourth inning. All five runs in this game came in the third. 
Hendrickson from the windup with his 58th pitch. It's a curve ball outside. Beck started the third inning rally, I guess you could say, with a leadoff single. 1 0 outside, although the double play from Samad Taylor cleared the bases and put two outs on the board, so it was up to the next five batters to bring in those four runs. But he set the tone. The 2 0, a little bit high, so 3 0 to Beck. See if he gets the green light. He does not. That was right down Broadway. He'll take it for strike one. Tomorrow night, we've got Space Night as part of our SNHU STEM series. 3 1. Swung on and driven to left center field. Kumana cutting over toward the gap. Now coming in and oh, make the catch. Reaching down by his hip to make the snag. Almost snuck its way in there, but. Beck is retired for the first time tonight. He's one for two. Samad Taylor's 0 for two, a strikeout and a double play. The average is an even 300 for the team leader in homers. First pitch just off the outside corner. Bases empty two and it's a 4-1 Fisher cast lead and the 1-0 pitch from Hendrickson up and away. Two balls, no strikes. Austin Martin would be next. And a little chillier here as the sun sets beyond the left field corner. Hopefully no impending weather. Wet weather, I should say. The 2-0 is inside. There's always weather. The question is, is it good or bad? Pitch to Samad Taylor. He will take down and away ball four. So a two out walk. That's how the four run rally started last inning against Josh Hendrickson. And now he's got to face the man who drew that two out walk, Austin Martin. degrees now in Manchester. Throw to first and Taylor has to dive back in there. Remember 18 stolen bases. They had the knee injury that had to miss a couple of weeks. First pitch is up high. Time was called before the 1-0 came home. Hendrickson still completed the delivery and threw it about 15 feet up in the air. High off the screen behind home plate where it's collected by Otto Lopez who's waiting on deck. Next pitch, a little bit high, so that's a tight one. But two balls and no strikes as Hendrickson faces Martin. Fisher Cats. Looking to build on the four runs they scored last inning and add to this 4-1 lead. 2-0. Flung on and popped up. Shallow center. Bonifacio comes in, but he's called off from right field by Steven, who makes the catch cutting in front of the center fielder to end the fourth inning. Two-out walk from Samad Taylor does not come back to Hurt Hendrickson, and we go to the fifth. It's still new. The fighting Phils know who to call for trash and recycling services. A proven winner, J.P. Mascaro & Sons, the industry leader for over 50 years. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality service for your home or business. That's J.P. Mascaro & Sons, one of the top companies in its industry. Trash and recycling services for home, business, and industry. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. 
check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARA. J.P. Mascaro and Sons, ready to serve you. Nursing home neglect is a serious problem. If you or a loved one has suffered from bed sores obtained in a nursing home or a fall down in a nursing home resulting in a fracture, our friends at Swartz Culleton can help. Call the attorneys at Swartz Culleton for a free consultation. Their phone number is 1-800-JUSTICE. That's 1-800-587-8423. Once again, call 1-800-JUSTICE today. Swartz Culleton is a proud sponsor of the Reading Fight Bill. It's summer. Time to trade hibernation for liberation. Couch time for tan lines. The sunshine and good times are waiting, so it's time to go the distance in a car you can depend on. Kia, backed by our 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Summer's calling. How will you answer? Kia, movement that inspires. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today for great deals on our exciting lineup of vehicles built for summer. Call 800 333 kia for details. Always drive safely. 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty program refers to a limited powertrain warranty. See retailer for warranty details. We go to the fifth inning here on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. It is a 4-1 New Hampshire lead with all four runs coming in the bottom of the third. Riley Hovis is back for more. He will face Madison Stokes, Rodolfo Duran, and Josh Steven. And he starts Stokes off with a fastball strike. Five, six, and seven in the Reading lineup. They won last night, nine to eight. Oh, one pitch inside. Stokes from Columbia, South Carolina. 1-1 one, one pitch on the outer edge for strike two. And he plays college ball for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Tenth round pick of the Phillies in 2018. Spent all 60 and now 61 of his games here in double-A. 1-2 pitch, swinging a soft tap route to second base. Should be routine for Lopez, and it is as he tosses to first. To take care of Stokes, 4-3. That's five in a row retired by Riley Hovis after the RBI single by Granny Kumana. You could call it six in a row. If you count the RBI single by Kumana, who was thrown out at the tail end of the play, eight to two to four as he couldn't get back to first base in time. It was Lopez tagging him out as he covered first base. Rodolfo Duran fouls off the first pitch. It's a 4-1 Fisher Cats lead in the top of the fifth inning. Game two out of six this week at Delta Dental Stadium. And then it's a quick trip to Portland, Maine, Hadlock Field. Six more games between the Fisher Cats and Sea Dogs. And then New Hampshire's back home August 3rd through 8th against Hartford. 0-1 pitch is fouled back. So nothing in two. is empty one away. It is a 4-1 Fisher Cats lead in the fifth. Hovis kicks and delivers the 0-2. It's up and away. Duran struck out swinging his first time up. One of four Ks for Riley Hovis. And now the 1-2. Outside again. Two balls, two strikes. Bob Lippman's this date in Fisher Cats history, July 21st, 2006. The Fisher Cats blanked Trenton 5 0 on this day 15 years ago in Manchester. 2 2. Breaking ball hammered foul deep down that left field line. But out of play 2 and 2. Ismael Ramirez and Kyle Yates combined for a Fisher Cats three hitter 15 years ago. Yates went four innings in relief with giving with just one hit allowed. Struck out seven batters and picked up the save. Chip Cannon walked and scored in a three-run second and homered in the eighth, his 16th of the year. 2-2 is outside, so from 0-2, it's 3-2. and 
Yes, Chip Cannon. Fitting name for a guy who's tied with Eric Thames and just one ahead of Kevin Biggio for the Fisher Cats single season home run record, 27 in one year. Here's the 3 2. Grounded hard toward third base, backhanded by Capra behind the back. Sets his feet, one hop throw, got him by a step. Vinny Capra made that look a whole lot easier than it was. But in the scorebook, it's the routine enough 5 3 ground out to get Durant. So two ground outs to begin the fifth inning, and here's Josh Steven, who walked and scored the only Reading run back in the third inning. He's one of just two base runners for the fight and fill so far. Grandy Kumana had the RBI single. He's the other. First pitch from Hobus. Backdoor slider is a strike. Wind in the 0-1, low. Fisher Cats have a 4-1 lead. Six singles, one double. It was a two-run two-bagger from Vinny Capra. The 1-1, hit hard, deep right field. If it's fair, it's gone, and it is a fair ball home run. Josh Steven with his sixth of the year. Has made it a 4-2 ball game. That ball was crushed, and the only question was, would it stay fair? And the Fisher Cats bullpen did their best to try to influence the umpire at first base as Gabe Alfonso, but he emphatically says fair ball home run just inside the Team Nissan Auto Mall banner draped down the first base foul pole in right field. So four to two. Now Lee Miller checked his swing on a breaking ball. No, he didn't. The appeal says it is a swing, and it's nothing in one. It's the fourth home run surrendered by Hovis this year. It's his fourth start of the season. The 0 1 is outside. One ball, one strike. Base is empty, two down. It's a two run ball game now. 1 1. Just missed the outside corner. And the count, two balls and a strike. Fisher Cats will have three, four, and five. The Eversource Power Hitters coming up next inning. 2-1 pitch, breaking ball, hammer to deep left center field. Back goes Young to the wall, and it is off the top of the fence, just barely stays in the ballpark. Young will fire all the way to third to keep Miller to a double. But back-to-back, -back, very well hit balls. Now the Fisher Cats on their heels a bit here. Solo home run from Steven. Two-out double from Miller. And it brings the tying run to the plate. It's the nine hitter, Granny Kumana. Stay back on a 2 1 breaking ball and unloaded on it for two bags. Looks like I had a real chance to go, but hit somewhere off the outdoor pride sign just below the yellow stripe. And now Kumana takes a pitch way inside, gets off the glove of the catcher Beck, and up to third goes Miller. It'll be a wild pitch. And remember, Hovis had allowed just two base runners in his first four and two thirds innings. So it was a walk, a steal, and a single to score the only Reading run, but then bases empty, two outs here in the fifth. Josh Steven hit a homer to make it a two run game. And still 4-2 Fisher Cats, but now after a double by Luke Miller and a wild pitch by Hovis, he's at third. Here's the 1-0. Inside again to Kumana. Just a lean out of the way. Mike Ellenbest is warming up for the Fisher Cats. 
Jim Sikowski, never afraid to visit the mound during an inning. Will continue to show his lack of fear and head to the hill. He'll be joined by the rest of the infield. And something we talked about last week in Hartford, how tough it is for a pitcher to resist nibbling when you get hit pretty hard, especially back to back. It almost looked like two consecutive home runs from the Phils, but instead, Steven, the solo shot, Miller off the left center field wall. And Kumada, now the tying run of the plate all of a sudden. Maybe if you're Hovis, you're worried about serving up another one that could tie the game. So Jim Sikowski, the longtime pitching coach out there to make sure he gets that thought out of his mind. But remember, Kumada singled home a run against him in his only other plate appearance. Back in the dugout goes Sikowski. Infielders return to their stations. And with a man on third, two outs. It'll be a 2 up pitch to Kumana. There's a strike. He finds the outside edge, and it's 2-1. and one. If he gets the out here, he'll be in line for the win. He's thrown 82 pitches so far. Hovis and the Fisher Cats have a 4-2 lead. Kumana with the Red Sox pulled up high, matching his red cleats against the gray jersey. Here's the 2-1. Ground ball, third base foul. Off the glove of the manager and third base coach, Sean Williams, down toward the tarp. The Fisher Cats grounds crew and front office staff neatly put away down the third base line. That was this morning around 10.30. Very few adjustments had to be made on the long roll. Job well done. 2-2 two -two from Hovis. Called third strike. Claps his hands into his mitt as he gets out of a little jam here. Fastball at 90, and he needed it for his fifth. Five guys, burgers and fries, strike out of the night. And he keeps New Hampshire in front, 4-2. to two. But Redding gets one back on a Josh Stevens solo home run. Nursing home neglect is a serious problem. If you or a loved one has suffered from bed sores obtained in a nursing home or a fall down in a nursing home resulting in a fracture, our friends at Swartz Culleton can help. Call the attorneys at Swartz Culleton for a free consultation. Their phone number is 1-800-JUSTICE. That's 1-800-587-8423. Once again, call 1-800-JUSTICE today. Swartz Culleton is a proud sponsor of the Reading Fight and Bill. The Reading Fight and Fills are proud to partner with Humane Pennsylvania throughout the 2021 season. Humane Pennsylvania is the region's premier leader in animal welfare and empowers the people in our communities to increase their capacity to care for animals so that all animals are safe, healthy, and treated humanely. Humane Pennsylvania is proud to be a Fiesta Friday and Bark in the Park sponsor. Learn more about Humane Pennsylvania and how you can help build the best community anywhere to be an animal by visiting HumanePA.org. To enjoy a perfectly crafted 1893 from the makers of Pepsi Cola, you must first appreciate its carefully selected ingredients. A dash of cola nut extract, a hint of real sugar, a splash of sparkling water, and a generous amount of attractive spokesperson. Trust me, I'm gorgeous. Cheers to 1893 Boldly Blended Colas, a delicious balancing act of premium ingredients from the makers of Pepsi Cola. Well, a good job by Riley Hovis to settle things down a little bit. Two hard hit balls from the Phils had Redding back within two, and it had the tying run at the plate. But He's able to strike out Grandy Kumana and through five innings to his credit. Two runs allowed, three hits, and he's currently in line for the win. But a long way to go, bottom of the fifth. We're halfway home. Otto Lopez is two for two with two singles. And his updated batting average to lead the league is now 339. First pitch, the curveball, but it misses inside for the left-hander Josh Hendrickson. He's now over 70 pitches. The 1-0. -oh. 
Low, two balls, no strikes. Four two Fisher Cats in the bottom of the fifth, out hitting Redding seven to three. Two zero -oh. on the outside corner, a called strike one. An MLB scoreboard update. All right, we'll do it. Especially because it's Blue Jays Red Sox. Two one is inside, three balls and a strike. Red Sox currently lead the Blue Jays 4-1. Robbie Ray on the mound for Toronto. Not a former Fisher cat. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is, though. He hit another home run. 3-1. Called strike on the outside corner. 32 home runs this year for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Where does that rank in the MLB leaderboards? Second behind, you guessed it, Shohei Otani. 3-2 to Lopez is fouled away. Now not only is Shohei going to make MVP awfully tough for the former Fisher Cat, but the Triple Crown is going to be even tougher. 3-2, dribbled foul. I mean, Triple Crown, I think, is a pipe dream for just about any player, but it's happened in our lifetimes. Miguel Cabrera did it. Of course, Carter Stremski. Actually, that's it since <laughs> 1967. Check swing is grounded foul by Lopez. So the count goes to three and two. Well, you look at Vlad's numbers as we continue our Manchester Boston Regional Airport flight to the majors. Third in batting average, 328. Behind Michael Brantley of Houston, 336. And Nick Castellanos of Cincinnati, 329. 3-2 pitch to Lopez, called third strike over the inside corner. And he's out for the first time tonight. Two for three for Lopez to start the first half of his evening. So one away for Jordan Groshans. And the home runs for Guerrero we talked about. It's two now, shy of Shohei, who's got 34. And RBI, well... Vlad is number one at 78, so top three in all three Triple Crown categories. Let's see if he can pull it off. Base is empty for Groshans, and Hendrickson's pitch misses down low. From the wind, the 1-0. Down and in, two balls, no strikes. Duo, cut on and missed. Chavez Young waiting on deck. 2-1 to Groshans up and away. He's one for two today, started the Fisher Cats scoring with a two-out single in the third inning. He and Chavez Young had back-to-back -back RBI singles. And then Vinny Capra had the big blow in the third with that two-run double. 3-1 to Groshans. Swung on and hit well out to left field. Kumana on the move back toward the track. Got turned around, but still able to make the catch, backpedaling all the way to the wall. Heck of a play by Kumana, or at least he salvaged what wasn't his best route to that one. Recovered nicely, and Groshans is retired. So a strikeout and a line out to begin the fifth for the Cats. Base is empty, two down for Chavez Young. First pitch, check swing. And the home plate umpire says he went around. Jude Corey did not need to appeal. Base is empty, two away. It's a 4-2 Fisher catch lead in the fifth. Here's the 0-1. Outside, one ball, one strike.
Hendrickson ready with his 87th pitch. It is cut on and missed for strike two. The Portland Sea Dogs on their way to their 15th consecutive win. They're waiting for the Fisher Cats next week at Hadlock Field. 11 to three for the Red Sox double A in the top of the eighth leading Harrisburg. One two pitch to Young, breaking ball, chopped softly to third, it will kick foul. Went about two thirds of the way up the line on the fair side of the chalk and then rolled its way over toward the third base dugout, foul ball. Mike Ellen Best is still warming in the Fisher cast bullpen, which would suggest that Riley Hovis is done, but not so fast. Let's see what happens when we get to the sixth, but Hovis has thrown 85 pitches, five innings, two runs, three hits, a walk, and five strikeouts. And two of the three hits directly led to runs. RBI single, Granny Kumana, and a solo homer, Josh Steven. One, two to Chavez Young. Called third strike, inning over. Right over the inside half, and it takes us to the sixth. It is Fisher catch four. Fighting Phils two. Blue Jays and Phillies double A action continues next. The Reading Fight and Phils are proud to partner with Mal Beer throughout the 2021 season. Mal Beer and Mal Cinco Estrella Slager, which is available in the Stadium Plaza Bar, has 128 amazing years of brewing history. Founded in 1890 in Spain, Mal Beer has always been there to satisfy the most demanding taste buds. Make sure to pick up Mal Beer and Mal Cinco Estrella Slager at First Energy Stadium at our Plaza Bar throughout the 2021 season and at your local retailer. Mal Beer is a proud partner of the Reading Fight and Fills and all 2021 Fiesta Friday celebration games. Mal Beer, the five-star taste and the quintessential beer from Madrid. Please drink responsibly. At Savage 61, our goal is to assist you in making a confident decision. Our friendly, professional staff members are available to answer your questions and listen to your needs. Whether you're shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle, we're ready to help you with your search. Visit our dealership at Pottsville Pike today. Fastball, curveball, slider, it's the pitcher's grips that make the difference. And when it comes to cornering, braking, and traction, CJ's Tires and Automotives can improve your car's grip with a new set of Honkook tires. Honkook tires are known for great handling and reliability mile after mile. Together, Honkook tires and CJ's are your winning team. So whatever your vehicle needs, an oil change, state inspection, brakes, alignments, or Honkook tires, Trust CJ's Tires and Automotives in Fairless Hills. CJ Tires and Automotives. They really are better, faster, and more affordable. We go to the sixth inning, and it's our first call to the full bullpen brought to you by Sheen Finney, the business law firm. When the Fisher Cats need legal counsel, we call Sheen Finney. Serving the legal needs of the business community in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, New England, and beyond. It's Mike Allen Best. He's from Parma, Ohio, Saginaw Valley State, which I believe is the same school as our team dietitian, Kara Terry. The more you know. 24th round pick out of Saginaw Valley State. One and three record with the Cats out of the bullpen. 4-6-1 ERA. And he's looking to protect a 4-2 lead in the sixth. His first pitch tonight. Misses off the inside corner. Has to face one, two, three, Danielle Brito, Archimedes Gamboa, and Bryson Stott. There is a righty warming for the fight in Phils. A 1-0. Oh. On the outside corner, that evens things up. How about the Milwaukee Bucks? NBA champions for the first time in 50 years. Big win last night. 1-1 one, one pitches outside, 2-1. and one. So it can be done. Super team not required. A colossal amount of good fortune concerning injuries from opposing teams, but it can be done. Good to see a small market team hoisting a trophy. 2-1 to Brito is in for a strike. It looked like Chris Beck, the catcher, was crossed up. And it certainly wasn't framed as a strike. And because of that, I'm assuming, is why the 
umpire Jude Corey is hearing it from the Fight and Fills dugout. He's got to cross his home plate below the letters and above the belt, or above the knees rather, you're in good shape. 2-2, two -two, swinging a bouncing ball right side. Scooped up by Otto Lopez at second, sidearm throw to first, and Brito is retired 4-3, and he is 0 for 3. So now Archimedes Gamboa. Two ground outs to first base from Gamboa so far. He's 0 for 2. First pitch. Called strike. On the outer edge at 86 from Ellen Best. So Riley Hobus is done, and he is in line for the win. Next pitch is bounced up the third base side. Off the mound comes Ellen Best, gets it, throws it a little bit too high. It brought Vacuna off the bag. He tried to make a bunny hop and then the swipe tag coming back down, but Gamboa too fast. He got underneath it, and that'll be a base hit. Tough play off the mound for Ellen Best. And it is the fourth hit of the ball game for the Fighting Phils. Time run at the plate now. It is Bryson Stott, the three hitter. Takes the first pitch up high. One on, one out, 4-2, Fisher Cat lead in the sixth. From the stretch, there will be no pitch because time is called. Fisher Cats went down in order in the fifth inning for the first time tonight. All of their runs, though, and five of their seven hits came in the third inning. Three consecutive singles and then a two-run double. Runner goes for second, pitches down low. The throw from back is a little bit late. Stolen base for Archimedes Gamboa. He used the speed to get aboard and does the same to get to scoring position. Fifth stolen base of the season. This is his 55th game with the Fighting Phils, at least this year. You may remember his unique name, Archimedes Gamboa. He played 113 games with Redding in AA two years ago. Next pitch from Ellen Best is fouled off the spacing of the sweep to the third base side. Bryson Stott 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout so far. Runner at second, one away. Ellen Best, the first man out of the bullpen tonight. 2 1 pitches outside, 3 and 1. WD Matthews is the New Hampshire source for your company's industrial forklift and aerial lift equipment needs. WD Matthews, lifting area business since 1955. When your company needs a lift, visit WDMatthews.com. Stott in the driver's seat. 3-1 pitch coming. He drills it to right center. Deep to the gap it goes. Young and Ora Maloye will not get there. It's off the wall. Jogging in from second is Gamboa. Heading to second with a ribby double. Bryson Stott. He's made it a one-run ball game. Four to three the score. And now the tying runs in scoring position. So a single, a steal, and a double. And it's 4-3. Chris Beck out to the hill to talk with Mike Allen Best. Started strong, got the ground out of Daniel Brito, but now in a little bit of a jam here with the cleanup hitter, Jorge Bonifacio. Another good weather night for baseball at Delta Dental Stadium. 
And all signs point to it continuing throughout the weekend. Can't wait for Atlas fireworks tomorrow, thanks to Hyundai. Friday, Christmas in July, that's always a big hit. Saturday night, more Atlas fireworks from the Executive Health and Sports Center. And then Sunday, Blues Clues and U Day, presented by Dasani. Ellen Best misses inside to Bonifacio. Go see two of my favorite people, Tara Leith and Aubrey in the box office. Aubrey's last name is escaping me now. I think it's Smith. The 1-0 pitch is hit in the air down the right field line. Bonifacio watching it sail out of play. And the count goes to 1-1. One one. Fisher Cats box office staff better than ever. It is Aubrey Smith, diehard Atlanta Hawks fan. What could have been if that referee's foot wasn't waiting for Trey Young and his ankle on the sideline. Man. No, I'm just bitter because the Hawks gentlemanly swept my Knicks in round one. Time runs at second base here in the sixth for the Phils. The 1-1 one -one to Bonifacio. The strike on the inside corner. Ellen Best on the mound. Hovis done for the night. Five innings, 85 pitches. Pitched more than well enough to deserve the win, but that's still to be decided. One, two pitch, way inside. And the count goes to two and two. And it might be done for Josh Hendrickson as well, because there is a fight and fills reliever standing still in the bullpen after having thrown several pitches, so it's like he's all warm. Two, two. Fouled away. Maybe a splintered bat there from Bonifacio. Yeah, he'll get a new bat from Madison Stokes. We've seen this happen before for Samad Taylor. He broke a bat, got a new one from the bench, and then had a home run on the next pitch. Home run here would give Redding the lead. 2-2, grounded foul down the third base side. It was 4-1 Fisher Cats after three. But then in the fifth, Josh Steven hit a home run. And then here in the sixth, a single from Gamboa and an RBI double from Stock. Has made it 4-3. And another hit here could tie the game for the cleanup man, Jorge Bonifacio. Throw to first, or rather to second, not in time. Fasio's 0 for 2. Alan Best gets the sign from Beck, who sets up on the outside half the 2 2 pitch. Called third strike. Breaking ball. Got him looking. First K for Alan Best. And now it's Madison Stokes. And so far, the biggest at bat of the night. A hit could tie it. And obviously, an out would retire the side. Shipping flight overhead. He'll be sending that uh, step stool I ordered to Nashua. Jorge Bonifacio is down. Madison Stokes is up. And the pitch is inside. Four, three Fisher Cats in the sixth. The 1 0. Breaking ball strike on the outside corner. New Hampshire will have Capra, Vicuña, and Ora Maloye set to go in the sixth. Will they have to break the tie or will they pad this 4 3 lead? 1 1. Low, 2 and 1. Tonight's a celebration of the Northeast Delta Dental Oral Health Challenge. If you can commit to brushing and flossing 
for a full week. You earned some tickets to a Fisher Cats game, and those were redeemed tonight. 2 1. Lined hard, right center, based it. It'll tie the game and split the gap. In with the fourth run is Stott, heading to second with a game tying double, Madison Stokes. And with two runs here in the sixth, Redding has come back to tie it 4 to 4. The well struck ball to the opposite field gap. Going ground out, single, RBI double, strikeout, RBI double. So a two out delivery from Stokes. It's a brand new ball game in the sixth inning. It went back and forth last night, that's for sure. And here again, the trend continues. Riley Hovis no longer in line for the win. Here's Rodolfo Duran who could give them the lead with the base hit. And he just missed doing so with a liner down the right field line. Foul. Duran is 0 for 2 tonight. As a righty worms in the Fisher Cats bullpen. 0-1 from Ellen Best, grounded toward second base. Dribbles toward the glove of Lopez. He's got it, and he'll sling it to first, and the side is retired. But one batter too late because Madison Stokes was able to tie it with a two-out double. So after five and a half innings, we're even. It's New Hampshire 4, Reading 4. Better pitching, faster base runners, and more runs batted in usually beats the competition. At CJ's Tire and Automotive, better selection, faster service, and more affordable options always beats the competition. When it comes to tires, CJ's MVP choice is a new set of Falcon tires. Falcon tires are known for handling, reliability, and value. And for more than 50 years, CJ's has been helping customers find the right tires at the right price. Price. Together, Falcon Tires and CJ's are a winning team. Stop in any time at your local CJ's or shop online at cjtires.com. CJ Tires and Automotive. Better, faster, and more reliable. We've been privileged at ROG Orthodontics to be part of the local community for over 60 years, creating generations of fantastic smiles. We're honored to be voted the number one orthodontist year after year and proud to be the top Invisalign provider in the region. We passionately believe we're changing lives every day right here in the community where we live. We offer interest-free, flexible payment plans and provide monthly scholarship programs for free braces. Be sure to check out our magnet contest to win free braces. We love seeing our patient successes, knowing we had a part in changing lives. One fantastic smile at a time. Savage 61 is a proud sponsor of Fiesta Fridays. Enjoy an r Phil's game, great food, music, and entertainment. The team will play as Los Luchadores de Redding Latino Tribute Uniforms. Visit Timmy Profit and Savage 61 Pennsylvania's most awarded dealership for all your automotive needs. We'll hit the reset button as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It was 4-1 Fisher Cats after three, but now we are tied 4-4 four to four in the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Vinny Capra, Kevin Vicuña, and Demi Oramaloye. Capra has the last Fisher Cats hit. It was a two-run double in the third that made it 4-1. to one. New pitcher for Redding. It is Billy Sullivan, the right-hander. Sullivan, 22-year-old from Newcastle, Delaware. 28th round pick of the Phillies just last year. Which is interesting. I thought they shortened the draft to just five rounds last year. At any rate. Be making his 15th appearance of 2021. Started with the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. Five outings, gave up just one run in five and two thirds innings. Crouch is low, hunched over, delivers to Capra a 94 mile an hour fastball strike. So four to four, we're tied.
And the 0-1 to Capra. Breaking ball off the outside corner. This delivery from Sullivan, the new reliever, makes me think of something I think my Little League coach once said when we started pitching. I was terrible at it. He bends over at the waist. 0-2 pitch is down and away. But look, if, if you, you can't throw strikes or you keep getting hit pretty hard, do something crazy in your windup to make the other team make fun of you. And that's all they'll be thinking about when they face you. How strange your windup is. They won't be worried about the pitch. That didn't work either. 1-2 to Capra, half swing, and a grounder foul up the first baseline. And he'll bring it back down to the first base. Chalk, as the count stays, 1-2. and two. Yeah, Billy Sullivan, or William Donald Sullivan, sets up on the first base side of the mound, almost tiptoes over there with his body facing third base. And he bends over at the waist, almost at a 45-degree angle. Bends his knees, but instead of coming up straight to deliver the pitch over the top, he kind of stays down low and hunched. And then he works his shoulders around and eventually the right arm comes through to get the pitch home. So Capra already looked like he needed a new bat as well as he leads off the bottom of the sixth for New Hampshire. Count is one and two, and the pitch. A little bit low at 95. This is the first time the Fisher Cats have played the fight and fills this year. We do go to Reading for the final road trip of the season, September 7th through 12th. 2-2 two -two pitch, breaking ball, got him swinging, tipped into the catcher's mitt for strike three. So Capra is one for three tonight. Here's Kevin Bacuna for two with a line out and a strikeout. Going to break the tie in the sixth. Base is empty, one down. First pitch is fouled off. 95 on the gun again. I see Bubba Blue down in the dinner on deck area behind home plate. It can only mean one thing. The sumo battle comes your way next if you're watching on MILB TV or if you're tuned in in the ballpark. 0-1. Another fastball. This one hits the outside corner for a call strike two. Credit the fighting Phils they have earned their way back into this ball game. 0-2. Oh, Slider down low. They have six hits to New Hampshire seven. Solo homer in the fifth start of the comeback made it a two-run deficit, and then two in the sixth with a pair of run-scoring doubles, one from Bryson Stott. And then two batters later with two outs, it was Madison Stokes. Stoughton Stokes. One, two fastball is just outside. Well, the count is two and two. Billy Sullivan, the first reliever for the fight and fills. Good numbers this year, a 1.96 ERA. Two, two pitch, check swing and a breaking ball. He just got a piece of it, foul ball. The count stays two and two. And the last outing or two for Sullivan has ballooned his ERA up a bit. Two runs in an inning last time out against Binghamton. Two two pitch. Another bender. This one sliced foul and just out of play to keep the count two and two. And in the outing before giving up two against Binghamton, it was one run in one inning against Harrisburg. Before that, having given up three runs in his last two innings. His ERA was 077. 2 2 pitch, got him swinging. Down goes Vicuña, so back-to-back -back strikeouts for Billy Sullivan, who's quickly showing us why he had a sub-1 ERA toward the end of June. 
You know, he was just activated off the injured list when this series began. So. His first outing in over a week. Looking to keep this game tied. Here's Demi Oramaloye. And to watch a first pitch strike. Looks like a reliever is ready for the Fisher Cats down the right field line for the seventh, it would seem. 0 1. Breaking ball low. Four to four, bottom six. Base is empty, two down. Demi Oramaloye at the dish. 1-1 one, one pitch is bounced back to the mound, but a tough hop rolls up the arm of the pitcher. Out to second base it goes, and they still get the out. Rito with the snag and the throw to first base. So a 1-4-3 ground out to send us to the seventh. We are still tied at four. Fisher Cats and fighting Phils on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. The Reading Fightin' Phils are proud to partner with the Berks County Mental Health and Developmental Disabilities Program. Together, we are striking out the stigma in order to raise community awareness about mental illness and the prevention of suicide. With three simple words, are you okay? The hope is to begin a conversation to show Berks County that we care. Suicide affects and hurts everyone, but help is here and we'll work together to raise awareness about suicide and identify what we can do as a community to prevent it. People in need of assistance and support should call Crisis Intervention at 610-236-0530. That's 610-236-0530. The Fight and Fill know who to call for trash and recycling services. A proven winner, J.P. Mascaro & Sons. The industry leader for over 50 years. Trust the familiar Mascaro Blue Elephant to provide dependable, quality service for your home or business. That's J.P. Mascaro and Sons, one of the top companies in its industry. Trash and recycling services for home, business, and industry. We are hiring and have open positions in Berks County. Check our website for open positions at jpmascaro.com or call 1-888-MASCARO. J.P. Mascaro and Sons, ready to serve you. It's time for the seventh inning here on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. New man on the mound for New Hampshire. Another call to the bullpen brought to you by She and Finney, the business law firm. It's Graham Spraker. Blue Jays 31st rounder back in 2017, 26 years old. He's got a 2-0 record this year with the Fisher Cats, a 1.96 ERA. Opponents batting just 181 against him. 33 strikeouts in 23 innings. We are still tied four to four as we play here in the top of the seventh inning. That'll be the bottom third of the order for the fighting Phils. Josh Steven, Luke Miller, and Granny Kumana. It was a uh, big win for Rowdy Red in the sumo matchup, by the way. And Bubba Blue had done plenty of canvassing to get most of the crowd behind him leading into the fight, so. Major heel turn from Rowdy Red to get the dub. First pitch of the inning and of the night for Graham Spraker is grounded foul. There's 4 1 Fisher Cats in the third, but three unanswered from Redding as tied the game. 0 1. Up high. Apparently they're practicing with some military aircraft overhead, which is why you may hear some more air traffic than usual over the airwaves. 1-1, one, one. up high, two balls and a strike. But you know what I always say when it comes to military activity? Practice makes perfect, so take all the flyovers you need, gentlemen and ladies. The 2-1, Steven takes Inside, three balls in a strike. So 
Steven had the solo homer in the fifth. Really started the comeback. 3-1 is up high. So a five-pitch leadoff walk in the seventh inning. And Steven, a guy batting 192, has yet to be retired tonight. Two walks and a homer. And he scored a couple of runs. Luke Miller struck out looking in the third, doubled in the fifth. Acuna holds the runner on first. He'll throw over a little bit late. Spraker so far in July has given up just one run in six innings. And time is called. That was on a solo home run here against the Sea Dogs back on July 1st. That's it. It's the only run he's given up since June 23rd. First pitch to Luke Miller. Fouled away. Did you know that the New Hampshire Division of Liquor Enforcement wants to remind you that providing alcohol to minors is a crime? Well, they do, and it is. If you're caught, you could face up to a year in jail and a $2,000 fine. Learn more at therongpath.org. When it comes to buying alcohol for minors, you buy, you pay. So buyers beware. Infield hoping for a double play ball. 0-1 pitch is swung on and missed. Fastball up and in. Four to four, we're tied here in the seventh. It was back and forth last night as well. Eventually the seesaw battle saw Redding come out on top. Nine to eight in four hours and 10 minutes. Like a late season Red Sox Yankees game in terms of time of game. 0-2, oh, ground ball, second base. Could this be the double play? Lopez flips to Groshans, he'll turn it to first. They get both, four, six, three, double play. Nicely done. So that wipes out the leadoff walk to Josh Steven. Miller bounces into the twin killing. And now the bases are empty for Granny Kumana. Now last night, I know Bob Lippman mentioned this because it's a stat that he and I just can't wrap our heads around. Fisher Cats had a 6 0 lead after four innings. And then fighting Phils, they came back. They scored nine of the game's final 11 runs. First pitch to Kumana is in for a strike. They got three in the fifth, three in the sixth, one in the seventh, two in the eighth. Cats got one back in the bottom of the eighth inning on the Chavez Young home run, but still lost by one. Oh, one pitch is cut on and missed. But the wild stat is that, yeah, Redding, they came back from 6 nothing down. It happens. Every team does that, right? Not so fast, my friend. In the proud history, three championships, three all-star games, 130-plus guys to go to the major leagues since 2004. Fisher Cats have never come back from a six-run deficit and won a ball game. 0-2 oh, pitch is down low to Kumana. One ball, two strikes. It's almost hard to believe, impossible to believe with all the talent they've had over the years. But the way I try to explain it is 2018, for instance, that team was so good they were never behind by six runs. 1-2 to Kumana is tipped foul. And the count stays one and two. I mean, a lot of reasons for a game going long, but 11 walks drawn by the Fisher Cats could have been part of it. One, two pitch is high, two balls and two strikes. And it's the nature of the beast. I'm sure fans have grown tired of hearing about this pace of play in these games, but we're talking history last night. Four hours, ten minutes, never before done. 2-2. Two -two. Swinging a blooper, shallow center. Lopez out from second. Can't get it. And it lands in for a base hit. A quintessential blooper from Granny Kumana. He's two for three. And that puts the go-ahead run on base. Seemingly harmless two-out single, but we'll see what they can do with the top of the order. Each team now has seven hits. 
Fisher Cats, six singles, one double. Clayton Phils, a homer, two doubles, and now four singles. Daniel Brito, top of the order, a hot smash, right side, base hit past the slide of Otto Lopez. Up to second goes Kumana. So after the double play, back-to-back -back singles, on back-to-back pitches, and the go-ahead runs at second base. These fighting Phils, they know how to come back. We saw it yesterday. They've done it again today. They do have four wins this year when trailing after six innings. Here's Archimedes Gamboa who can break the tie. We'll take the first pitch inside, check swing, and he's claiming catcher's interference, pointing at Chris Beck. That's rude, but try and get his point across. Cesar Martin, the Fisher Catch manager, and the Phil's manager, Sean Williams, both walking toward the home plate area. Now, Cesar holds off. Williams makes the trip all the way down to talk with the home plate umpire, Jude Corey. Corey says something to Williams that makes him go away. And now he talks to Cesar Martin, the Fisher Cats manager. Cesar is not thrilled, but not angry. He's more in a come on man state of mind, but I can't definitively say what he's asking. All that happened there was Gamboa pointing at the catcher, Chris Beck, saying that he interfered with my last swing. It was a pitch inside, check swing, ball one, so it's 1-0. Oh. Two on, two out. We're tied in the seventh. It's New Hampshire four, Redding four. Spraker, a look back at second, now the 1-0. Oh. Hits the outside corner at 92 to even things up. Lefty reliever in the Reading bullpen. We've got a handful of them. Five righties on the roster, lefties on the roster. 1-1 one, one pitch is swung on and smoked to right, but Ora Maloye is there right at the wall to reach up and make the catch. So the Phil strand a pair, and we're still tied. 4-4 four to four at the stretch. Why don't you stand up and stretch? You've earned it. Good one here tonight. At Delta Dental Stadium, still tied after six and a half on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. The award-winning Reading Hospital Tower Health Character Pool Party provides an unforgettable night out with your family and friends. Enjoy a baseball game while swimming in the 87-degree heated pool directly behind the right field home run wall, plus two and a half hours of all-you-can-eat buffet and photos and autographs with the crazy hot dog vendor and the Fightin' Phil's mascot band. Regular game tickets are $30 per person for groups of 20 or more. Give us a call today at 610-370-BALL. T-Mobile is the leader in 5G coverage and speed. No one else covers more Americans with the fastest 5G. The r are proud to introduce T-Mobile as the title sponsor of our Plaza Stage. Fightin' Phil's fans can continue to expect great performances on game days and non-game days. The T-Mobile Stage is home to great bands, such as the truest Fightin's mascot band and many others. It will also continue to house great musical performances during the off-season. Unlike any other area at First Energy Stadium, the Stadium 61 Dugout Suite puts you at the closest seat to the action on field, located just feet away from the diamond on the first base side. With covered seating, ability and motion accessible seating, and the most unique view around, your group will thank you over and over again for a one-of-a-kind experience. Tickets for the Dugout Suite are $27 and include options to add food or drink packages. Lending and Wealth Management Services to families and businesses throughout New Hampshire and Southern Maine. With 24 community offices and assets exceeding $1.6 billion, 
Bank of New Hampshire is the oldest and one of the largest independent banks in the state. And they're proud to partner with the Fisher Cats. Visit bankNH.com for more information. 9-1-2 and two in the Fisher Cats lineup. Chris Beck will lead off. Samad Taylor after him. And then Austin Martin. Looking to break this 4-4 tie. Redding was down 4-1 to one in the third, but they scored three unanswered. And here we are. Maybe one more big delivery could win this game for either side. First pitch swinging from Beck. He'll chop one to third. Glove there by Gamboa. And he throws out New Hampshire's catcher. Samad Taylor's turn. 0 for 2 with a walk. It was a two out free pass in the fourth inning. First pitch. It is in for a strike. Pitcher is Nick Lackney. He fires one in and it's fouled away. So nothing in two. Nick Lackney is a left hander from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I should have saved my Bucks talk for this moment. But congratulations to him. You have to imagine he's a Milwaukee fan. 0 2 is fouled off of Taylor. That's a sight you don't like to see because that's a. Uh, what we presume to be what kept him out for a couple of weeks. Fouled one off the knee. So he'll walk this one off, up the first baseline, and he'll take his time. Hobbling a little bit. Goes over to talk to Austin Martin in the on-deck circle. What's up, man? How are you? Feeling good? Okay, back to the batter's box I go. Count is nothing and two. Base is empty, one away. It is New Hampshire four, Reading four, and Fisher Cats at the top of the order here. Taylor will dig in. Lackney comes set, kicks and delivers an 0-2. Swing and a miss, breaking ball got him, and Taylor is 0-3. So here's Austin Martin, who has a similar line to Taylor, 0 for 2 with a walk. He did score the Fisher Cats' first run in the third on the two-out single from Jordan Grossens. Lackney pitched at Minnesota. They have a, uh, I always forget, we've got a front office staffer who loves Minnesota. Austin Martin swings and misses. It's Andrew Larson, of course, all right. Ticket sales account executive. And their football coach, I believe, says something along the lines of row the boats, and then there's something I can't understand. 0 oh, 1 to Martin is low. One ball, one strike as he looks to break the 4 4 tie in the bottom of the seventh with the base is empty and two outs. Row the boats, something, something, go Gophers. Nick Lackney, a former Gopher, could probably tell us. The 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball hit in the air to very shallow right field. Long way to come in for Steven, and he will get there on the move just to step into foul territory after he made the catch. It was snagged in fair territory. Now Martin flies out to end the seventh. The Acme Distribution Center in Denver, Pennsylvania is hiring warehouse positions now. Attend Acme's Job Fair Wednesday, July 14th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 500 South Muddy Creek Road in Denver, Pennsylvania. Starting rate of $19.30 per hour, including premiums. Potential first year earnings of over $50,000. Acme offers industry-leading benefit packages with family coverage and a $2,500 retention bonus. Hiring this Wednesday, July 14th. To learn more or register, go to HiringEventDenverPA.com. Savage Auto Groups is a proud sponsor of the Reading Fighting Bills. Our large inventory and wide selection of models, along with competitive pricing, allow us to make great deals on many vehicle makes and models. Visit Savage 61, Kia, 
and L&B in Berks County for all your automotive needs. Established in 1928, the Manor Golf Club is one of the oldest public courses in Eastern Pennsylvania. Located conveniently between Philadelphia, Lancaster, and Allentown in Sinking Spring, the Manor Golf Club offers a true test of golf on a traditional championship-style golf course where shot-making takes precedence over length. Visit themanorgolfclub.com for more information. and his insights. Stott will swing and foul this one away. Count is two and two. I've been handed a card here, uh, a throwback to the 19th annual Manchester baseball dinner. Wow, so this is almost the original version of the Granite State baseball dinner. Two, two to Stott is up high. From 1967 on a Wednesday. Wow, all right. Autographed by a lot of people. How about the honored guests? Boog Powell, Nick Eddy, Bubba Smith, Tony Canigliero. 3-2 to Stott. It's fouled off the Kendra Smith, so he hangs in there. Ken Coleman. Wow, very impressive. Mel Allen, the Toastmaster. This is something else. I'll tell you what, folks. Big names on here, but stay tuned. Later on this year, for the next Granite State Baseball Dinner. Could be even better. 3-2 is hammered. Deep right field. It's got the distance, and it's well fair. Home run Bryson Stott. It's given Redding a 5-4 lead in the eighth inning. A rare run against Graham Spraker, but it's a big one. A tie-breaking blast, and Bryson Stott has put Redding in front 5-4. Off home run, Redding's in front. Here's Jorge Bonifacio, who steps out before the first pitch from Spraker. Next pitch, or the first pitch now, is swung on and missed. It'll be an 0 1 from Spraker. It's up high. Around the Eastern League, Portland has indeed won its 15th consecutive game. They're in first place. Bonifacio swings and skies this one to medium depth center. Young will come in and makes the catch for the first out. Bonifacio is 0 for 4. It 
pitches. 5 4 fighting fills here in the eighth inning. Righty on righty. Breaker against Stokes, and he gets a first pitch fastball by him. Nothing in one. Bases empty, one down in the eighth, the 0 1. On the outer edge, it's nothing in two. Wind is blowing out toward right center now, which is where that blast from Stott went. I think it would have left the ballpark regardless. O2 is up high. It's his 10th home run of the season, Bryson Stott. And the one two. This one's hit well out to right field. Back to the track goes Oram Aloye. He'll stop at the wall, jumps and makes the catch. All right, Demi. That's a round of applause from the fans and from some of his infielders, including Kevin Vacunia. A little bunny hop reaching over the padding and to the brick level, maybe about five feet below the yellow stripe. Demi with a good grab, and that's the second out of the eighth inning. Here is Rodolfo Duran, fighting Phil's catcher. First pitch, strike at the knees. Bowie on top of Hartford, 12 to five. Nightmare season for the Argos in the basement all year long. 0-1, grounded to second base. Otto Lopez has it, couple of steps. Now the throw, and it's a 4-3 ground out to retire the side. But leadoff homer from Bryson Stott has put Redding in front five to four after seven and a half on the WGIR Fisher Cats Radio Network. Schatz Electric has been in business 45 years. Tompkins Vis Bank does everything for us from our banking to our insurance. They provided us new ideas and solutions. For example, remote deposit. It's very convenient because it's 24 seven. I'm confident Tompkins Vis will be with us in the future. Tompkins Vis Bank and Tompkins Insurance. Service, stability, strength. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Tompkins Insurance products are not More than enough on, on most nights, I would say, to pick up a win for him and the Fisher Cats. Five runs, two innings, three hits, a walk, and five strikeouts. But Redding just won't go away. First batter is Otto Lopez. He'll take a strike to begin the bottom of the eighth inning. Fisher Cats need a rally here. Need a base runner. Haven't had one since the fourth inning. Nick Lackney, former gopher, still on the mound. He'll miss down low with his first pitch. He's a very tall right-handed pitcher in the Fisher Cats bullpen. Looks like Fitz Stadler. 1-1. Hard chopper toward the middle. Gloved at shortstop by Stott. Throws to first, and they get the out. 
Impressive play at shortstop by the guy who hit an impressive home run to break the tie in the top of the inning. So Lopez is retired six to three. He's two for four tonight with a couple of singles and a run score. Eleven straight Fisher Cats retired since a two out walk to Samad Taylor in the fourth inning. So no base runner since the fourth, no hit since the third as we play in the eighth. Groshans takes the first pitch up and away. Three hits last night for Groshans. One for three with a run scored and a run driven in tonight. The one up out in front. And that evens the count. A lot of roster moves for both of these teams. So our rotations for both sides, uncertain after tomorrow. Jack Perkins for the Phils against Johnny Barbado for the Cats. But for the weekend, it's still TBD on both sides. We know Casey Lawrence is now on the roster. 1-1, one, one, down low, two balls and a strike. Homer ties it. Groshans has five this year. 2-1. Chased it down low. So two and two the count. Chavez Young is on deck. He went deep last night. And tonight he's two for three with an RBI single. It'll be a 2-2 two -two from Lackney. Tried the backdoor breaking ball, but it stayed flat. So outside, three and two. He's a lefty pitcher. Standing tall at 6'4", 210 pounds. He's got an old-timey mustache. 3-2, outside, ball four. So there's your first Fisher Cats base runner since the fourth inning. It's a one-out walk in the eighth. Media star Nathan Strauss on the PA tonight, introducing Chavez Young. He's got the tying run at first. First pitch from Lackney, inside 1-0. Oh. Bowie now has a 10-run lead on Hartford. It's 15-5. to 1-0 oh pitch. The breaking ball is outside. In the Southeast Division, or sorry, the Southwest Division, new format. I, I still haven't figured it out clearly. Akron, the Indians shutting out Richmond, the Flying Squirrels, and Giants, 3 0. Young takes down low here, so he's in the driver's seat. Three balls, no strikes, one out. Groshans on first after the walk here in the bottom of the eighth. It is 5 4 Reading. Might be New Hampshire's last best chance. 3-0 is popped up. Behind home plate. Will it get out of play for Young? Yes. He can breathe a sigh of relief. And this team's always been aggressive. Whether it's stealing bases, swinging at 3-0. That time it almost cost him. But the question is, are you going to get a better pitch than that? And right down the middle at 88. And he just missed it. But now a 3-1 should see another decent pitch, in theory. 3-1 is tip foul. That was headed toward the upper outside part of the plate. And the count now 3-2. and two. Stadler looks just about ready in the Fisher Cats bullpen. He would handle the top of the ninth. And time is gone. Infield that double play depth here for the Phils. It's Stott at shortstop, Brito at second. From the stretch of 3 2. Foul back. Protected well there. Might have been ball four. Probably was, but 
Close enough where you can't take it. Vinny Capra waiting on deck. He's one for three with a two-run double. That two-run double came in the third, and the Fisher Cats have been held hitless since by an impressive combination of fighting Phil's pitchers. Hendricks in the starter. Sullivan, the sixth inning reliever, and now Lackney for the seventh and now eighth. 3-2 pitch, got him swinging, breaking ball, tied him up inside. And Young is now two for four. Second out, and now it's Vinny Capra. Tying runs at first, go ahead run at the plate. First pitch to Capra, curveball low. Blackney comes set, lefty delivers, a strike on the inside half, so one and one. If the inning continues, it's Kevin Vicuña waiting on deck. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Low and away, two balls and a strike. First is not in time. There's a lefty throwing in the fight and fills bullpen. Five four Redding, bottom eight, runner on first for the Cats. The two one to Capra, swing and a miss. Off speed on the outside edge. Now it's two and two. Blackney ready, 2-2, two, two, outside, so three balls and two strikes to Capra. If the inning continues in any capacity, Vicuña would have a chance to knock home a runner in scoring position unless Capra takes care of it himself. A 3-2 to Capra, fouled away. Batting average at 368 for Vinny this year. OPS over 1,000. They're going to come back here in the bottom of the eighth. It was Redding who came back down 4-1 to one early. The pitching has locked things down against New Hampshire. Another 3-2. Chased one down in the dirt, strike three. Duran, the catcher, will pick it up and throw to first. And that completes the K. So back-to-back -back strikeout from Lackney after the walk to Groshans. And we go to the ninth. It's still Reading 5, New Hampshire 4. Shots Electric has been in business 45 years. Tompkins Vis Bank does everything for us from our banking to our insurance. They provided us new ideas and solutions. For example, remote deposit. It's very convenient because it's 24-7. I'm confident Tompkins Vis will be with us in the future. Tompkins Vist Bank and Tompkins Insurance. Service, stability, strength. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Tompkins Insurance products are not FDIC insured and are not bank guaranteed. The Fightins feature special pregame happy hours every Monday through Thursday at the Yingling Hometown Tap Room. Tompkins Vist Bank Plaza opens at least two hours before game time for all happy hours. In addition to $1 off Rusty Rail Brewing, thanks to Winster Distributing, all happy hours feature live music on the T-Mobile stage. That's happy hour every Monday through Thursday home games thanks to Rusty Rail Brewing and Windsor Distributing. The Redding Fight and Fills Birthday Party Package is the best way to celebrate a birthday. Whether you are a youngster or an adult, there is no better birthday than a Fightin's birthday. The Fightin's Fan Birthday Package is customizable for fans of any age and starts at just $120. 
Base packages include 10 general admission tickets to a Fightin's home game, an autographed baseball, and a VIP reserved parking spot. Fans can also add a wide variety of experiences and options to make sure your favorite Fightin's fan's birthday is a grand slam. To the ninth inning we go. It is a 5-4 Redding lead. And the Fisher Cats looking to keep it just a one-run deficit. We'll put Fitz Stadler on the mound. He'll be facing Josh Steven, Luke Miller, and Granny Kumana. Seven, eight, and nine in the Fisher Cats order. Those three guys, even though they're at the bottom, have had a pretty productive day. Steven hasn't been retired yet. Two walks and a homer. Luke Miller has a double. He's one for three. And Granny Kumana is two for three. Stevens ready to go from the left side. Home run made it four to two. Back in the fifth. It's five four now. Redding. First pitch from Stadler. And there's a slider up high. One run game in the ninth. One zero -oh is in for a strike. Pitch to Steven misses. Lefty warming up in the fight in Phil's bullpen. We got a 5 4 lead. Fisher Cats in the bottom of the ninth will have Vicuña or Maloye in Beck. Bottom third of their order hasn't been as effective as the bottom of the Phil's order, at least tonight. 3 1 pitch is fouled back. A 7 8 9 for New Hampshire combined 1 for 9. Retired this guy yet. Two walks and a homer. 3 2 pitch fouled away. Tomorrow's game, 7 05. Jack Perkins pitching for Redding against Johnny Barbado. Big league veteran pitching for the Fisher Cats. We'll have fireworks and it's space night as part of the SNHU STEM series. Fireworks presented by Hyundai. 3-2, Steven takes high ball four, so three walks and a home run tonight for him. Fourth time on base and four plate appearances. And as Redding looks to get some insurance in the ninth, they're off to a good start with a leadoff walk. Stay tuned after the game. It'll be Nathan Strauss with post-game coverage. Luke Miller doubled in the fifth. He's one for three. First pitch from Stadler, swung on and missed, a fastball at 98. Looks like that's Kyle Dowie, the left-hander warming for Redding down the left field line. 
to Miller, misses inside. Should be one and one the count. Field wants a double play ball. Groshans and Lopez up the middle. The 1-1 one -one pitch is fouled away. So a ball and two strikes. So far, Miller, one for three with a double. And this Fisher Cats offense, the narrative has been how contagious the hitting has been. They're getting seven hits in a game. Usually it's going to be double digits easily. Everybody gets in on the fun, but it just stopped after the third. 1-2 is fouled away. So it stays 1-2. and two. Our home plate umpire to Corey wagging that one finger. One ball, everybody, making sure we know. Manual scoreboard still says 2-2. Two and 1-2 two. One, two pitch is swung on and missed. Down goes Miller. Nice slider for the strikeout from Fitz Stadler. So first K for Fitz, and now with one away, it's Granny Kumana. Still a chance for a double play, this time maybe an inning ender. Steven held on first already with one steal today. Kumana swings and lines this one to right center field. That'll find the gap for extra bases, cut off by Ora Maloye. Heading to third is Steven. They'll wave him around. Could be a play at the plate. Lopez throws just a little late. Wasn't a bad throw, but not in time to get Steven as Grandy Kumana doubles Redding's lead with an RBI two base hit in the ninth. It is 6 4 fighting Phils. Leadoff walk comes in to score. And there you have it. The bottom third of the order continues to produce for the fight and fills. Kumana, the nine hitter, is three for four. He's now on second base for the leadoff man, Daniel Brito. Adler looks at second, and the pitch. In for a strike. Tight fast or tight slider at 90. You could call that a cutter if you like. Ten hits for Redding now. Six to four, fighting fills. Five unanswered runs. Pitch is grounded foul, so nothing in two. Brito so far is one for four tonight. Started 0 for three before a single in the seventh. Runner on second, one away. Fisher Cats will have Vicuña or Malloy and Beck with a chance to come back in the bottom of the ninth. How big will the deficit be, though? 2 is outside. Well, it's baseball season here in New Hampshire. What better way to celebrate than grilling K.M. Franks? They've been bringing people together since 1909. Family crafted for four generations in Chelsea, Matt. So if you're heading to the ballpark, grab a K.M. Frank at the concession stand or pick up a pack at your local grocer. K.M., together we grill. 1-2, fouled away. Well, more than likely hit three hours again this evening. I mean, the story of the night, though, is the pitching from Redding after that third inning. It looked like the Fisher Cats were going to run away with it. Two out rally. Austin Martin walked, Lopez and Groshen singled, then Vinny Capra and Chavez Young drove in runs. One two is tipped foul as Brito stays alive. But again, after the Capra two run double, just two base runners for the Fisher Cats over the last five innings. A walk to Samad Taylor in the fourth. And a walk to Jordan Groshans in the eighth. Here's the one-two from Stadler. Would you believe it if I told you it was a foul ball? 
into the stands on the third base side, and the count is one and two. If the Fisher Cats are going to come back, they'll need the first hits from Vicuña and Ora Maloye, and each of those guys has lined out. One, two is chopped to second base, backhanded by Lopez, flat-footed throw to first is in time, nice play. And that retires Brito. To third base goes Kumana. And with two down, there's one more insurance run available for the fight and fills. Kumana at third. Six to four is the score for now. But in a series as wild as this one, you need every bit of cushion you can get. Pitch from Stadler is fouled away. Archimedes Gamboa singled and scored in the sixth. He's one for three tonight. Actually make it one for four. 0-1, oh, down and away. The lefty Kyle Doey is all set to go down that left field line. One, one. Lined hard, base hit, right field. So they get the two out insurance run they need. Gamboa able to drive in Kumana from third. And it's still a save opportunity for Kyle Doey coming in in the bottom of the ninth, but now it's a more comfortable one. And what would be his first save of the season. Here's Bryson Stott, who currently is responsible for the would-be game-tying swing or game-winning swing. Go ahead, Homer, in the eighth. Now they're going to add two more here in the ninth. And counting. First pitch to Stott was in for a strike. 0-1 oh, from Stadler. Down low. Nathan Strauss will have highlights and more for you after the game to get you set for Thursday's matchup. Mr. Katz will have to hope they won't be looking to get their first one of the series tomorrow. Still time tonight. Redding has scored in five of the nine innings. Here comes the 1-1. Faced a high fastball at 98, so it's one and two on stop. Seven to four Redding, out hitting New Hampshire 11 to seven. Could be their second consecutive comeback win. Stadler's one, two. Line to hard, past the dive of the shortstop Groshans and out to left center field. Stott going for extra bases. And the relay throw home is in time. What a play. Otto Lopez throws a dart to the dish. And they're able to get Gamboa trying to score from first. That'll send us to the bottom of the ninth. It will still be a safe situation. At Savage 61, our goal is to assist you in making a confident decision. Our friendly, professional staff members are available to answer all of your questions and listen to all of your needs. Whether you're shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle, we're ready to help you with your search. Visit our dealership on Pottsville Pike today. The R. Phils and Savage 61 are excited to bring you Fightin's Baseball live from the comfort of your own home. If you are listening to this now, you're probably watching on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. Thanks for tuning in, and feel free to check us out on rfills.com slash pressbox for all the elite baseball information on the Fightin' Phils. The world-famous Fightin' Phils mascot band celebrates its 21st season in 2021, with pregame concerts starting Saturdays in May, thanks to Truist. You heard right, actual mascots playing in a rock and roll band. See Quack the Rubber Duck on lead vocals and guitar, Screwball on drums, Bucky on bass, Change Up on bongos, and Blooper on lead guitar. A real band jamming on the T-Mobile stage before Saturday games this season. Don't miss the one-of-a-kind Fightin' Phil's mascot band. Pre-game on Saturdays, thanks to Truist.
no one knows what will transpire here in the bottom of the ninth inning, so stay tuned. Seven to four, the Fisher Cats trail as the late inning onslaught from the fight and fills has extended Redding's lead to 7-4. And they'll go to Kyle Dowie in his, a chance to get his first save of the season. This will be his 17th appearance out of the bullpen. He's got a 4-2-9 ERA. Another left-hander out of the fight and fills pen. The 24-year-old from Arcadia in California, 16th round Phillies pick in 2017. Here comes Kevin Vicuña, Demi Oramaloye, and Chris Beck to follow him. Fisher Cats need base runners. First pitch is swung on and missed. A fastball at 95 from the lefty. I'm sure you've heard how Grammarly and Young each had two hit nights. Capra one for four with the one was a two run double. 2-2 to Vicuña, fouled away. The Shrikats hoping to get around to the 3-4-5 power hitters presented by Eversource. Right now it's the seven hitter, Kevin Vicuña. Off the field, Eversource powers NH saves, helping New Hampshire homes and businesses save money and energy with best in the nation energy efficiency solutions. Eversource, proud energy efficiency partner of the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. 2-2 to Vicuña, way outside, so Interesting here, three and two, leadoff man in the bottom of the ninth. You almost feel like if New Hampshire's got any chance to put three or four on the board, you need a leadoff base runner. Here comes the payoff. He walked him, ball four. Great plate appearance from Kevin Vacuna. Started 0-2. Took ball one, ball two, fouled off the fifth pitch, and then the next two he let go by. So it's the third walk issued since the third inning, but those are the only base runners for New Hampshire since their four-run third. They get a four-run ninth, they'll walk it off. Demi Oramaloye, a couple of hard hit balls today, but 0 for 3 is the line. First pitch swinging, strike one. Seven to four fills, but the Cats have the tying run on deck. It's Chris Beck. 0 1 to Oramaloye. Fouled away. Well struck, but a big slicer down the right field line, and it's nothing in two. A little bit of life for the Fisher Cats in the bottom of the ninth after the leadoff walk to Vicuña. 0-2, swing and a miss, he pulled the string, that's tough from Kyle Doey. And he gets Ora Maloye, who's 0 for 4. And now Chris Beck with one out in the ninth. Tying run stays on deck, but it is the top of the order with Samad Taylor grabbing a bat.
First pitch to Beck is a fastball outside. Beck is one for three, singled his first time up. This pitch is swung on and driven deep. Left field, down the line, and it is gone. A home run just over the yellow stripe on top of the manual scoreboard. Chris Beck. It is his first double-A home run and a big one. He has narrowed the gap to one. It's a 7-6 ball game in the ninth. That one rattled around there, came back onto the field of play. A fighting Phil's reliever will toss it back into the Samuel Adams brew house as Crick Beck touches him all for the first time, and he makes it 7-6. Now base is empty, but he got the top of the order. Samad Taylor now, Austin Martin next, and then Otto Lopez maybe. First pitch from Kyle Dohe to Taylor is a foul ball and a check swing. <laughs> Dohe looking for his first save. 0 1, cut on and missed off speed. Fisher Gats making it a hard earned first save. Manual scoreboard says seven to seven. It is still seven to six. Pitch is cut on a miss strike three, so down goes Taylor. Now Austin Martin, the batter. man standing for New Hampshire, Austin Martin, standing in as a tying run. First pitch is up and away. <laughs> 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored tonight. A homer ties it in the ninth. Base is empty, two down. And predictably, too much time from Doey on the hill. Rightfully so, Martin will call time. Now the one up. Outside, two balls, no strikes. The throw to the mound was bounced in there from the catcher, Duran, so Doey wanted a new ball, and he'll get it. Hitters count for Martin. Here's the 2-0. Big swing, but just got a piece. Tipped it off the catcher and then off the umpire. And the count 2-1. and one. There's a righty warming up for the Fisher Cats if we do get to the 10th. I believe Sean Rakowski, but no promises. Two outs, bottom nine, one run game. The 2-1 to Martin. Curveball strike, and New Hampshire is down to their final strike tonight. It is 7-6 Redding with two outs, bases empty. Two balls, two strikes to Austin Martin, New Hampshire's top offensive prospect. It's the guy they want at the plate to keep it alive. Doey ready, and here's the 2-2. Down low, Martin let it go. So three and two. If he gets aboard, it's Otto Lopez, the league leader in batting average. He's two for four tonight with a couple of singles. Not the wor worst spot to be in if you're the Fisher Cats. 3-2. Hard grounder, but right to shortstop. Gloved by Stott, throw to first, and Redding hangs on. 7-6 to six the final, and despite a thrilling comeback attempt led by a two-run homer from Chris Beck,